On today's part of my take, we have a lot of sports. Holy shit. What a weekend of sports. We have NBA playoffs kicking off. Phil Mickelson winning the PGA Championship. Stanley Cup playoffs. We have uh, our good friend Paul Bissonette on the show, who actually, uh, if you're watching on YouTube right now, uh, which please subscribe and upvote every single video on YouTube. That helps us a lot. He's actually sleeping on the couch while we tape this. So he's going to be with us for the entire episode. Yeah, but we he'll only speak in like the middle third. I think I think what we'll do is at the end of the show, because uh, the end of the show we're going to do up and a, get a Monday lottery reading. Number. Yeah, we'll wake him up. We'll maybe talk a little bit about uh, me being a twice dad now at the end of the show. And we'll also wake up Biz. So... Make sure you tune in for after biz for that. But yeah, we got a ton of sports to get to. We're going to get to it all. Before we do that, a word from our friends at BetterHelp. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp Online Therapy. And in Mental Health Awareness Month, Barstool Sports is proud to support destigmatizing mental health. May is Mental Health Awareness Month. And you know that here at Barstool, we support our veterans in getting the help they need. And now we want to support everyone. So anyone out there who uh, may be too stressed, anxiety, bad thoughts going through your head, PTSD, depression, whatever it may be, you should feel okay about talking about it. And without a healthy mind, uh, being happy is very hard to do. So is if this is for you, therapy can give you the tools to make a, a life a little bit easier. So better health, what is it? It's customized online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat sessions with your therapist. So you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. That's huge because you're probably saying if you're someone who maybe has never had therapy or is thinking about it, dipping your toe in the water, this is the best way. You don't have to go meet with someone in person. You don't even have to show your face. You can just talk to someone. Sometimes it's good to just talk to someone who maybe doesn't know you who can give you uh, what they call that, the 10,000 30,000 view level of what's going on in your life, give you some help, give you some tools so that you can live a happier, healthier life. It's much more affordable than in-person therapy as well. And you can start communicating with your therapist in under 48 hours. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp, and our listeners get 10% off their first month at betterhelp.com slash PMT. That's B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P.com slash PMT. If you've ever thought about going to therapy, talking to someone, betterhelp.com slash PMT is where you can start, and uh, it's okay to not be okay. That's what we're going to say, all right? That's what we're saying in May in uh, Mental Health Awareness Month. Okay. Let's go. Welcome to part of my take presented by betterhelp.com slash PMT, betterhelp.com slash PMT. Uh, you can see a therapist online or phone call 10% off when you put in that code PMT. Today is Monday, May 24th, and I would like to say as a Brooks Kepka fan, I am happy for Phil Mickelson. So am I. I'm happy for Phil. I'm happy for uh, all the Phil stands out there, of which there are many. Thumbs up. They have been, hey, big cat. Hey, Thumbs up. Thumbs up. Thumbs up to lefty. The uh, the Phil Mickelson fan club has been dormant for a long time. They haven't had a lot of reasons. They've been like the cicadas. Mm -hmm. And now they're back. It's been, what, eight years, ten years since A Phil long time. So won a major. And uh, the end of that round, it was cool seeing a crowd that size back out on a golf course. I was trying to think about it because uh, everyone knows our stance on this show. We have our three guys. We root for them very, very hard. And we try to uh, slander or libel everyone else. But there is... A few people that I think are in the category of, holy shit, this is actually awesome. It sucked that Brooks was up against them in the final pairing, but Phil is in that category. Phil and Tiger kind of are those guys where maybe if Freddie Boom Boom Couples ever ever made a run for it, I'd also root for him. But they're in that category of... Uh, good it for is, golf. It's good for golf, but it's also just fucking cool. It's a cool story. Phil Mickelson is 50 years old. Phil Mickelson won his first tournament, golf tournament, professional golf tournament, 30 years ago. Mm -hmm. He's won a major in three different decades. He's won. Uh, he's he's won a tournament in four different decades. He was. You just you just referenced it, PFT, that it's been a very long time. It's been so long. Phil hasn't been in the top 20 in 17 tournaments. It's been so long that he had to get a special exemption for the U.S. Open this year because he was 115th in the world. Yeah. Like, that's how long it's been since Phil has been uh, playing really good golf. And then he shows up, and I don't, I don't know about you guys, but I was sitting there watching the entire tournament being like, well, Phil's going to – the triple bogey's coming. Like, he's going in the drink. Something's going to happen. 
But no, he was just fucking cool, calm, cool, smaller titted Phil Mickelson. I was about to say the, the only entire the only thing I don't like about the new Phil is that he's in too good a shape. His calves are too nice. He doesn't have the man boobs anymore. When Phil was out there dominating with like a, a nice, a respectable B cup hanging from his chest, that was cool to watch. But yes, it, yeah, it's it's very cool to see Phil back out there. Like, and with the uh, with the sunglasses that he was rocking this weekend, I don't know where you even get sunglasses that look like that. It looks like something it's cool. You, you know, Pugs sunglasses, the ones that are in all those truck stops. Uh huh. It looks like. Something that you would get out of there, but Phil pulled it off. He pulled it off. He they're probably cool. very expensive. And he's got a lot. He's got a ton of fans around him, and his fans are very drunk individuals, which I like. Again, things that are good for golf. Having a rowdy gallery is something that, like, I kind of miss people yelling and like being able to hear audibly the slurred words of golf fans in yes. the final round of a major tournament. That's also good for hashtag golf. It was uh, at the end when the, when the fans, uh, you know, basically swarmed him going up the fairway on the 18th. It was like, oh, my God. It was actually happening. Co it was coinciding with the tip-off of the Knicks game at the Mecca, MSG, for those who don't know about it. Uh, and they were, had 15,000 fans there. And it really felt like, oh, fuck. Like, we... We're so used to this world where we, we convinced ourselves, hey, sports are playing, so it's okay the fans aren't there. No, no, no. no fans not being there sucked because it was fucking awesome when Phil and, – and you know what? Phil is a great like lesson. It, I think he's one of those guys that everyone roots for because he's always been – like good to the fans, and he's always yeah. been kind of that people's golfer type feel to him. Lefty Phil, like I, 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 he's not. I don't think he even has any association with New Jersey. But every time he golfs in like New Jersey, everyone just fucking drunk and like Phil. They feel bad about the gambling thing. Yeah, 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 the, yeah, gambling, the thing. gambling thing for sure. And, and like with Phil, it's also he captured almost an entire generation. He's got yeah. like Gen Xers. Phil standing next to Phil Mickelson like what you saw on the 18th hole, that's Burning Man for Gen Xers. Yes. That's as close as they'll get to like taking drugs and going to a music festival and discovering their inner selves for 3 days. It's just like drinking 17 Coors Lights and then being in the same like square mile as Phil Mickelson. It's Phil, it's that's, lefty. That's what it that's what it means to those guys. Th and also like Mickelson, he's a guy that I always get the feeling like he could oh, show up. Oh, is moving. Sorry. Oh, he's rolling around. I always he's get good. the feeling like he could show up and be good for at least like one round. Yes. Or two rounds. But like an entire four putting it together is cool to see. Like Phil's a guy that if if he's got a nephew, I assume that his twin brother who's his caddy has a, has a son or a daughter. If he's got a nephew or, um, or a niece and like he catches them smoking cigarettes, Phil will be like, let your uncle have one, show you how it's done. Smoke it all down to the filter in one drag and mm -hmm. be like, later loser. Yeah. And walk away. Like and peel he, off. He's always in got. In a Mustang that wasn't there before. Yes. Yes. He's always got. A trick in his bag, ready to go. But it was it was cool to see him do it for four days in a row. Fifty years old, yeah. It, they actually so they were talking about it that Phil basically admitted that he didn't have the mental toughness slash stamina to compete at a high level for four days straight. So recently, he had been playing. He had been forcing himself to play thirty six holes a day just to like push himself. And he actually had a tweet. Did you guys see like? Uh, like maybe 10 days ago, he had a tweet that was essentially like, it's okay to fail, which is kind of cool to see because usually that's such a cliche. It's okay to not be okay. Yeah, it's cliche bullshit that people put online. Like Gary Vee's like, hey, failure's the best thing that's ever happened to me. Shoot your family in the face and see how that feels. But this was, he said it, he mm. meant it, and then he went and won the PGA Championship. The oldest guy to ever win a major, 50 years old. And he was hitting bombs, too. He was hitting he bombs. Had like a, a drive, He's lefty. I think 360 yards on the back nine today on Sunday. He's Just lefty. bombs. Just bombs. So now, as it pertains to Brooks, I do want to say that as members of Team Brooks, his knee's ahead of schedule. Our knee is ahead of schedule right now. And the Open is the one that we've had circled for Correct. a long time. Because the Open is the one that Brooks hasn't gotten yet. Well, and it also, um, I mean, I, not excuse guys, but his knee is hurting him. And he wasn't able to get all the way low to read putts. Mm -hmm. And the putter is what kind of killed him today uh, in this weekend. So... Ipso facto, he probably would have won this tournament by 15 strokes if his knee was okay. Well, they said when he missed his first three-footer uh, of the day that he couldn't get low enough to line up the stripe exactly. to aim at the hole. So exactly. he was he was essentially flying instrument-free. Right. You just basically put Brooks, he's a jet fighter, right? He's used to flying an SR-71 Blackbird spy plane directly through the core of the earth and out the other side and doing barrel rolls the whole time. You put him in like a 19... 
17 biplane with, you know, two tanks of gas, and he still managed to get across the Atlantic. Yeah, he was so, close. So, like, shout out to Brooks. Great job, Brooks. We're ahead of uh, schedule. And he's still, to be fair, Brooks Kepka is still leading on aggregate under par fact. in terms of major tournaments all time. Yes. So, we, still number one. They had that stat where he's, like, 50 strokes better than the next guy in the last five years. What were you going to say, Hank? A lot of AWLs out there this weekend. Yeah, too. shout out them. Brooks team, the team, the team, the team. You're all part of the team. Um, and we would never ask you to do what may have happened on the front nine today to Phil and have one of you guys pick up one of Brooks's drives, put it back down in a better lie. We would mm-hmm. never ask you to do nope, that. Nope, put it – no. But do that. But we would never ask you do to. Do it. But I'm asking. We would, no, you're, uh, you no, no, you're not. You're telling. No, no, no. We have a... We have a now no, we have now I, we have an out. PFT I, is saying do not. I speak, I'm saying do. I speak you for make the whole your podcast when I say do not do it. I speak for the whole podcast when I say, please, will you do it? Balls in your court. Uh, quote of the tournament goes to John Rom for me. So I don't know if you guys saw this, but he had a tough couple days and he was asked about his round, and this was his quote. I, so so the person asked, like, hey, maybe not ending it the way you wanted, but in your estimation on the golf course, does this open things up for the leaders to score a little bit this afternoon? Talking about he three over for the championship. He said, I don't know and I don't care, to be honest. I hit the ball tee to green as well as I could have for most of the part and barely made any putts, and yeah, I'm not really happy. And to be honest, being in the 40th place and finishing bogey bogey like that, I really don't want to be here right now. I mean, clearly the scores are out there. It's very doable right now. 68, 67 is out there. It's possible. I had every chance. I just couldn't make a putt. That was great, though, saying I don't want to be here. Mm -hmm. I just Uh, don't want to be here. Biz is moving his foot right now. He just moved his leg up. See if he'll say something in the mic. Biz, do you have anything in the mic you want to say? What are your thoughts on Biz is coming up in a minute. He actually was coherent for our interview. Semi-coherent. But now he is passed out. If you're watching on YouTube, again, subscribe on YouTube, please. And thumb up every single uh, for for Phil video. Yes, thumbs up for Lefty. Yes, yes. I want to put one in in uh, someone's ear hole real quick. Kyle Porter on CBS. Yeah, I've seen this guy a couple times. I don't know what his fucking deal is. Okay, this is what he said. It's going to be wild when two players from different generations step to the tee in the final pairing today. And the one who has a knee problem, horrific fashion sense, and a midlife crisis growing on his face is actually not the fifty year old. Hey, buddy, shut the frick up. And I say that because he's an elder at the Mosaic Church of Richardson. He puts that in his bio. Oh, respectfully, shut, shut the, the frick up, dude. Shut the heck shut up. The fr- shut your frickin', f- shut your heckin' frickin' mouth. It's honestly, like, that's kind of a cheap shot. At Total point. cheap shot. And, hey, it, he's, hey you know what? I, it sounds to me like he's a little bit rooting for injuries. Yes. Also, uh, I saw that there were a lot of people coming at the fashion sense of both Brooks and uh, Tony Finau who were wearing Nike Golf. Uh, guess what? Ever heard of Derelict? Okay. The next fashion wave, you don't even know it. You're actually, should we call them? I mean, they're chuggy. The, what? The Nike hats? No, the people who think those Nike hats are lame. You are think chuggy. they're... I think they both, can't I, understand fashion outside the box. So they it, just want a fucking nice little, you know, white hat. I think that they can both be chuggy. But you know what? Sometimes Chuggy is good. Yeah, fashion forward. Um, uh, yeah, it's called fashion, bro. That's what Brooks said about the off whites, right? Yeah, it, exactly. I don't, I don't like golf journalists getting to decide what's cool as far as fashion no. goes. No. Uh, we have to take a stand somewhere as a society. Yeah. And when you have Kyle golf, Porter. when you have golf journalists deciding what good uh, fashion sense is for clothes and facial hair, I think at that point we need to take away their card. Mm-hmm. Agreed. Kyle Porter. Howder boy, uh, fucking Will. loser. Howder boy, Will Zalatoris. All right, too. so we have updates from both of our other guys. Will Zalatoris uh, did okay. Also saw him post an Instagram after the after the tournament. He's flying private planes now, so that's he's doing great. Like mm-hmm. that's a win. Yeah. Like I think he's upgraded. Uh, Max. So, little editor's note on Thursday's podcast. We recorded it around four or five o'clock. I think I said in the show. That Max was uh, minus three, tied for twelfth. He was at the time, and then whatever happened after that. Let's just, you know what? Let's just hold that 
moment in time forever. Max was top 12 on Thursday. He was, let's hold that moment of time and we don't have to talk about the rest of the weekend. Well, it wasn't actually technically a weekend. It was just Thursday and Friday. Yeah, when you're talking so, about a golf tournament, it's all the weekend. Yeah, it wasn't. There was no weekend days for Max this weekend. But he was top 12 at one point. Well, actually, no, I should take that back. He Max did have a weekend. He actually had a great weekend. He got to enjoy his weekend. He got to go hang out with his family for the weekend. My favorite thing about about golf when it's played like on an ocean course or near any any time it's it's nearby any body of water is just the announcers always saying, "Now this putt's going to break away from the ocean." Yeah, and I don't know if they are aware how gravity works with slopes and things, but when they say it's always going to break away from the ocean, I believe it. But I don't think that's a hundred percent true all the time. It's also I, I, you know, the the course was windy. They it was cool. It was cool that it was windy, but also it was on the ocean. They also, so of course they, it was windy. They also said, "What's his name?" Um, Scott. Which is the Scott that's you know, not Scott Van, Van Pelt, not that guy. Uh, the other Scott. He Scotty was, Too Hotty. Scotty Too Hotty was saying that uh, he first of all he told a story about Phil Mickelson and gambling and tried to edit himself by changing the numbers of the units that they were betting against each other. Yep. But it was obvious all he was doing was just taking away three zeros. Yeah. So he's like, I bet Phil a dollar, and then he counter bet me a dollar, then I bet <laughs> him five dollars, and then. Phil said, "No, let's make it a twenty dollar bet." It's like, dude, we know exactly you're not ma- you're not masking it the way that you think that you're masking it. Right. Uh, but then he also said that yes, Phil Mickelson won this weekend, but he in fact said that the course was the real winner it was. for how it performed on Sunday. Yes. And we'll see this back in the rotation of PGA Championships. The Ocean Course. The Ocean Course. Yeah. You can also say the Ocean Course about like any place. I just like it because it means that it's really nice. Because usually when it's uh, when they have to clarify, that means there's probably, I don't know, there's probably like three or four courses at this club. Mm-hmm. It's the Ocean Course. Or Beth Page Black. Mm-hmm. Have they ever played not anything? Not blue, not at, like, red, Beth, Beth not Page green. Gray? Yeah, no, no, no. Black. Black. Yes. Black Diamonds. Uh, all right, but yeah, congrats to Phil. That was a fucking awesome story. That was, it's the it's the cheesy, like, sports rule moment. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. watching Phil on Sunday, all weekend really, sports fucking rule. I do feel a little bit bad that somebody tried to go like Tanya Harding, Nancy Kerrigan on Brooks's knee in the crowd. Yeah, but we don't have to talk about that. We don't have that. to talk about Just that. Just everyone watch yourself. Less bumping into Brooks, more picking up his ball and putting it in the hole for Yes. Him. No, but yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Uh, okay. Put it on a tee. Let's, Before we move on, oh, we have a special delivery. Ab- slice ab- pizza. Absolutely, Jake. Whatever you want. Jake. All have? right, so Jake is delivering us a pizza from Slice. We Thank actually you, just ate some pizza. We eat every single Sunday night when we're in the studio. Thank Ooh. you to Slice. Jake, this is a big sausage pizza. Slice works with over 16,000 local shops and has saved local pizzerias $250 million in fees. You can earn free pizza when you order on Slice. Eight pizza points equals a free large pie. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. That's like buying a cup of coffee where you get the punch card. You can earn pizza points by ordering from any of your favorite local shops. It's perfect, the partner for uh, perfect partner for ordering pizza ahead of the game. So download the Slice app. Use promo code Take for three dollars off your first app order. I have the Slice app. It's awesome. So anytime you're thinking pizza, new places, old places, anything, find it. On the Slice app, it's more money for the pizzerias you love and $3 off your first order on uh, the Slice app with promo code TAKE. You bring up a good point, Big Cat, and that's that when you order not through Slice, sometimes you're paying more money to the delivery service Correct. and not as much money to the nice paisan that made your pie for you. Yeah, by the way, I have a... um I have a co- I have a coffee place I go to, and they offer me the punch card every time I decline. And I don't know why, but it's just such a fucking like power move that I just have over mm-hmm. them. Because they they see me almost every day, mm-hmm. and they're like, "Dude, you could get a free cup of coffee for." T-. But I'm, but in my head, I'm like, "But then I'd have to fucking put it in my wallet, and I have to remember to bring it out." So every time they offer it, they punch it and they try to hand it to me. I'm like, "No thanks." But also, see you tomorrow. You've got like that residual effect in your head of somebody trying to sell you on like a TJ Maxx credit card. Right. Every time you check out and you're like, no, I'm not going to let you scam. I'm not. Yeah. I know that's how they get you when they I'm, try to give you that stamp card. Yeah, I'm not walking out of here with any paper. Yeah. I, I walked in with no paper. I'm walking out with no paper. Mm-hmm. But I don't. It's just one of those 
But we have to maybe when Mount Rushmore season comes, we'll do do a Mount Rushmore subtle flexes. It feels it feels good. I feel like I have one up on them because I'm just like nah. I just, but I I will see you tomorrow mm-hmm. and the next day and the next day. Probably enough times this week alone to get a free cup on Sunday. But I'm still not going to do it. I recently cleaned out the old wallet and got rid of some stuff that I don't need. I had like three different punch cards that were totally filled up that I've just never used, even though I've been back to those places. Yeah. Because I feel bad claiming them. Yeah. I'm like, give me something free. I don't know. You never know. Never know. You never, you never know. know. Um, all right. Let's talk some other things. Let's talk some other sports. Let's talk. NBA. Mm, let's, talk let's talk about the NBA. Washington it, Capital season okay. being over. Let's get before, I don't ooh, think we need to should get we? Soggy, Hank. Uh, are people asking you to get soggy? Uh, Did you say it was caps here? No, I never said it was caps here. Mm. Uh, we're not getting soggy. We're getting al dente with pasta. Mm. The complete opposite of soggy. Um, we're going to eat pasta until we puke. If you want to join me, Hank, I think that'd oh, be yeah, fun. Oh, yeah, that's true. I forgot and about that. And Chardonnay. Yeah, and Chardonnay. Yeah. So we got to figure out a time to do that. All right, the bottom line is the Caps are not a good hockey team. They did not deserve to win this series. Hank, congratulations. Your Bruins beat uh, undermanned, injured uh, shell of a playoff hockey team. Good job. Boo. Uh, very proud Boo. of you. You beat Zidane Chara, the guy that you ran out of town, the guy that you couldn't stand to see a second more wearing the Did you guys win the game one? Black. Touching stuff in the handshake. Yeah, Wait, was this, a, was this a gentleman sweep? Uh, it was a gentleman sweep, in fact. Shit. Yeah. Hank, Hank, gentleman Shit. sweep. Gentleman Shit pumping. Hey, good to see you get a win. Yeah, yeah. yeah someone tweeted me the Kevin Malone win. Uh, gif. <laughs> it's, it's just nice to win one in that. Yeah. That's honestly how I feel. You needed yeah. So you're now down down not quite as bad not historically bad yeah that uh i mean i thought that was going to be a series too no i mean especially the first three games going to overtime and then that was just it that was they just ran out of gas the russian gas yeah i don't know what happened but uh yeah i i don't feel great about it obviously but at least, this was not a team that with the exception of like the immediate aftermath of the tom wilson incident where it seemed like the stars were aligning. Once I actually saw them playing in the playoffs, I was like, this is not – it'd be cap if I were to say that it was caps here. <laughs> yes, yes, it would be cap. And I get to continue to use cap now, yes. which everybody's really excited oh, about. Oh, that's awesome. Mm-hmm. I, now, now you're cap. I, uh, it, if, if you're going to lose, you might – what is Biz – okay, is he alive? Just making sure, yeah, I'm just making sure. That- if you're going to lose, you might as well lose in like a week. Yeah, I mean, I do think that there is something to be said. As much as fun it is, as it is to have your team make a deep run, like if your team doesn't have it, just be out and be the first team. I guess they were technically the second team out, mm-hmm. but by the by the third round of the playoffs, no one will even remember the Capitals were in the playoffs. You know what? We bowed out today. Yeah, it was a classic bow out. All class from the Capitals. I would have liked to have seen a playoff game in DC with like a full Capital One Arena. That would have been cool. Yes, uh, but. Yeah, just not not a quality team. Should we put a little slice of pizza underneath Biz's significant nose and see if he can smell it? No, we're gonna do it up? after. We're gonna do it after his interview. Okay, we're gonna wake him up. But yeah, congratulations, Hank. I will. Uh, I will fulfill the so- not the soggy sorrow, but the pizza bet. We need to figure out when we're doing that. We should do that in the live stream. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully, it's uh, Bruins Islanders because the live oh. streams would be great. And, and you we, just and sitting just in the back, yeah. just housing pizza. We could go to Borelli's. Yeah. Oh, I'd go yeah. to Borelli's for that I, because I'm going to root for the Islanders against the Bruins. I want to see Frankie win. I would go to the Borelli's for that. Yeah. And just watch you just go to town on pizza. Although no, it's not pizza. It's pasta. Pasta. I, although going to Borelli's like yeah, that's very disrespectful to puke, Mister Borelli's pasta. Pasta up. You think so? Yes. If I eat enough I ate of it? so much. I think that's disrespectful. I think that's a crime against a, the family. That's a bet. You go, you're going to need to sit down after I'm going to sit down with him? Yeah. That's a bet. Okay. All right. Yeah, I'm excited for that. I'm excited for that. All right. Oh, Biz is moving again. Nope. He is staying asleep. The best part about Biz sleeping on the couch during this entire show is I guarantee you his hotel room is like two blocks away tops. Yeah. He was I was in here with him earlier and he was kept complimenting the couch. He's like, This is such a good couch. Like, this couch is awesome. <laughs> he was just feeling you out to see if it was okay if he just laid down on it. <laughs> Do you think he's like listening to us? No, nah, well it's subliminally. You think so? He'll, on, wait, I'm gonna try, he'll uh, wake up in a little bit and he'll have our exact same takes. He did ask me like seven times. Who was on the show tomorrow after we recorded our interview <laughs> with him? <laughs> let's see what let's see if this what this does. Okay, no, he's not picking up his phone. I thought maybe he would he would pick up his phone, but he's dead to the world. Should we steal his wallet? Yes, absolutely. Jake, can you steal his wallet? 
Steal his steals Rolex. Steal his Rolex. Jake, steal something. Regift it to steals, Grinelli. Steal something from him. And then tell everyone about how we gave it to him. Here we go, Jake. So everyone can be like, oh right, my Jake's God, getting Jake's up. getting up. Oh, Jake has his phone. He's got his phone. He stole, stole his phone. His he stole his right. phone. He's got a missed call. He's got cameo requests. We should probably wow. do those. Is he uh, Is he password protected? Yeah. Okay. All right. Biz is coming up in a minute. He is coherent for our interview with him. Um, let's talk some NBA. Let's talk some NBA players. Because we're going to talk about all the Stanley Cup playoffs with Biz. We go through the series and everything. Where do we want to start with NBA? I have a take. It's about the Celtics yeah. and the Nets. Okay. Obviously, okay. the Celtics lost. Fire away. That it, first half, though. They had a great first uh-huh. half. They had a chance. Ken Walker played terribly in the second half, and the series is basically over. Uh, sweep, maybe gentlemen sweep. But No, that's not how that works. Whatever. Who cares? <laughs> maybe gentlemen sweep for the Celtics. Uh, you have to win. Right. Right. Um, but that's not going to happen. Okay. Kevin Durant, they kept saying it during the broadcast, like Kevin Durant came to Brooklyn because Brooklyn's cool and he didn't want to go to New York. Cause Dude. He, he was proven wrong in the like in one season. It's not like he was proven right over time. He was so wrong about that. They, and if he was on the Knicks right now, they, it would yes. be – it's already be like insane. Mm-hmm. It's already yes. insane. Everyone's going crazy just because just they're in the playoffs. They're not even that good of a team. If Kevin Durant was on this team, people would be going insane. They were trying to make Brooklyn – and like the Nets, and let's let's at least slow down a little bit because our friend Blake Griffin had a great game. But they never talk about him. Plus one on the court. They no just big talk deal. about the big three. Uh, kind of disrespectful. They were trying so hard to make it like MSG or Staples Center by showing like the celebrities in the crowd, and it was just old giants. It was just Michael Strahan and mm-hmm. O.C. U- Umanura. They probably paid them money yes, together. Yes, correct. Like, like it, we were just talking about this trying to make ago. it happen. Like at MSG, they always do Celebrity Row, where they right. show the celebrity, and it's always Christopher Maloney from Law right. & Order, like no matter what Woody it is. Woody Allen. I've seen Christopher Maloney at Knicks games. I've seen him at Rangers games. I've seen, I'm pretty sure he was at the Dog Show. He's, mm-hmm. But they always have like natural... Yeah. Yeah, they always have like natural Michael celebrities Rappaport. there. This one was just uh, like... A block of tickets <laughs> that they gave to the so New York fuck. Giants, and they're like, yes. distribute these please. as you see fit. See, could someone please invite Eli? Yes. Oh no, Eli's not coming. But it was it was painful how hard they're trying. The other thing I had from that game was the first half the Celtics were like, oh, this could be a series. Then you remembered like the Nets just trade off possessions where it's like, oh, here's Kevin Durant. Uh, you know, shooting a, a turnaround like 15 footer over everyone. Here's Kyrie Irving finishing at the rim like no one else in the league. Here's James Harden, you know, hitting threes and, and getting fouled going to the. They they just when they all like all three of them are just so fucking ridiculous. Mm-hmm. I don't and Blake. I don't know how and Blake. I don't know and Joe Harris. I don't know how like you stop them. I just don't. Yeah, I don't it, get it. Also, it's, it's, is, J- is James Harden also back to being like a little bit chubby? Yeah, he's no, he's the number jersey. one on their team. I said it. He's the he's the guy who keeps it going because when they he was out, they were a different team. He's the straw that stirs the drink. No, but I'm saying like physically, yes, his body, correct. he's yes. looking good. Also, that. like he is looking healthy uh-huh. in the classical sense. Like yeah, he's, he's got to put on some old pounds paintings of people for playoffs. And yeah. it is really, uh, it's not talked about enough that this is the perfect setup for James Harden because every single year the playoffs come around and it's like James Harden has to do so much and they call him differently than they do in the regular season and he fails like spectacularly on a public stage. Now he has Kyrie and Kevin Durant to help him out and mm-hmm. he like. Those guys are the guys, and he's somehow like the third piece, even though he's not. And also Jeff Green, who will be in the NBA for the next twenty five years, Forever. probably because he he he's just he got, he does just, not age. Yes, his face does not. He age. looks the exact same as he did when he got into the league. They've been calling him Uncle Jeff Green for twenty years. Uh, this might be twenty years ago he was twenty eight. This might be a good Jake assignment, but I was thinking as I was watching the game because they only talk about how. Durant, Harden, and Kyrie account for like eighty-seven percent of all the points. Like we gotta just do the kind of Kwame Brown and just add Blake in there. Yes. So it's mm-hmm. like Blake, the old Kevin, the old Hank Aaron, Tommy Heron. Yes. Tommy we, Aaron hit hit thirteen home runs. Hank Aaron hit whatever seven. But I think we gotta start whatever. doing that on, on Twitter and stuff and really get it out there where it's like, J- and put Blake Griffin first. Correct. Like mm-hmm. Blake Griffin, the big four. Kevin Durant, yeah. James Harden, and Kyrie <laughs> Irving accounted for ninety percent of the. I points. like that and like. Hank Lockwood and Jake Marsh have combined nope. to win seven games of ping pong in a row together. Correct. That's true. Congratulations. Yes. Thanks. That's also a fact. But uh, it was a plus one. Yeah, that's what I said. He's plus one. So he had one positive impact, impact on the game. Yeah. He had one point. 
Right, so it's like, I think it was 83% for Kevin Durant, so it's like 84. Yeah, he's plus one. When he was on the court, they were winning, okay? Mm -hmm. Blake won that game himself. That's a fact. All right, other games. There was actually, the the first round of the playoffs are awesome. Oh, I'm not going to be, I'm going to be the bigger person and point out, uh, because I was asleep on Friday night by the time the game, like, ended, but I'm not going to point out the fact that uh, as cool as Wednesday night was with the playing game, you know it would be cooler is if Steph Curry was actually still in the playoffs because he was the eight seed. But now we get the Grizzlies. But I'm not going to point that out. Don't point that out. That was good good by me, right? Because mm-hmm. it would be cool to have Steph Curry in the series against Utah, wouldn't you say? I think a lot of people have said that, but I don't think that we need to necessarily say that ourselves. Um, the Heat, Bucks, I think that's going seven. Heat Giannis culture. can't shoot free throws. Yeah. Well, not in 10 seconds. Yeah. I, so well, there's, uh, there are yeah. people. Chris can, Middleton, maybe he's the guy. So there are people that are complaining about the Giannis call, but they were like, the Heat told the ref, they were like, hey, he's taking 13 seconds every time with the ball. Yeah. The ref can't at that point, like, ignore it and let him go 13 seconds. Correct. Rules are rules. You filed the. Yeah, we had Christian Horner on, on Friday. You have to. You filed the complaint. File the complaint. And then um, I think it was Jeff Van Gundy brought it up to, like, when LeBron was shooting free throws and saying he steps over the line every time, like, yes. before he gets to the rim. Yeah. We need to call him on that. Like, rules are rules. Yeah. Right? Shaq used to do that all Without the time. LeBron's been doing that for a long there's time. There's chaos. Um, all right. So that game, that was a great game. J Fucking Butt. awesome game. J Butt. Hated, 22. Hated he played the, poorly. But. Hated the I know. Heat jerseys. Pisses me off. Oh so yeah, much. no. Roan, our friend Roan said it. Or if you know him, also is uh, uh, Angelo Palantonio on this show. Uh, he said it perfectly. The Heat basically were like, "Hey, the Pacers didn't make the playoffs. So let's just wear their fucking jerseys." Like it made no sense. Yeah. I, I, that. Not to get really mad, but that is essentially like we. That's becoming uh, like European soccer. How European soccer, w- watching European soccer in this office the last few years, like you will watch when when Troops has Arsenal on, you will sometimes watch they'll be wearing teal, they'll be wearing red, they'll be wearing yellow. It's like how how do you have that many colors? Mm-hmm. I think none of these colors are the same. And, and when you're the Heat, you've got great jerseys already. Great jerseys. Wear those. Wear, Wear those. And, and three check colors. Out also. You get three yes. colors to yep. to mix and match. Yeah, we sound very old, but I agree. I don't care. I, I, I know. I agree. When you turn on that game the heat and they're wearing yellow, yellow yeah. you're like, what the fuck is this? Mm-hmm. <laughs> It made no sense. They're Arizona State now? If it's like a throwback, like when the Lakers wear the blue jerseys because it's like those were their old jerseys, right. that's one thing. But but even – I'm okay with wearing a, a different color if white is the main color because then it's like, oh, okay, it's a different ho- – yellow just is not their color. They, like if they're wearing it's in the pink, logo. Pants wearing, on PMS 137. Oh, my God. <laughs> Jesus Christ. The flame. It's the color of the, the flame. flame. The, right. the flame, flame is yellow. Fine, fine. Yeah. Uh, Shouldn't the flame be white, though? Like, isn't white a hotter well, flame? Usually, they, the they, runs, went, they do white hot. They but. went with the sabermetrically the least hot color of flame. Mm-hmm. Yeah. As, that's bad. Well, they have the white That's ring. why they lost. Yeah, but that's the yellow clearly flame. Clearly why they lost. 137. Um, shout out Duncan Robinson. Shout out Duncan also Robinson. Also had a great game. Yes. Uh, are the Clippers... Is Kawhi's legacy on the line? That's yes. what people are asking. Yes, it is. This is a legacy series. This is a legacy because series. Because if, if you lose a, against the same team twice in back-to-back years and that team doesn't eventually go on to win the championship. Wait, last year they d- In the did, bubble? They lost to the Mavericks in the bubble, didn't they? I thought they lost to the Nuggets. Am I wrong? I've been wrong you're, before. You're, you're remembering that incredible Luka game? I am, yes. Where he hit yep. the game winner? You're right, that's Which was incredible, but I'm pretty sure they lost to the bubble nuggets. Okay. Denver over Clippers. Right. Yeah. My fault. Semi-fall. That's okay. Western semifinal. But, but, but yeah. yeah. But yeah if, no, just readjust. If pivot you, okay, your point. I'm gonna you pivot. still have your pivot foot. Listen, my point <laughs> remains exactly the same, even if my facts are incorrect. My take's not going to change. No. You, Don't ever change you a assemble, take. You told me that. Hang on, wait. I'm gonna, where's the camera? You told me you were assembling a super team. You said I was led to believe that the Clippers were going to win three titles in a row when you assembled that team with that defense, and you go out, you get Mr. Big Shot free agent, Kawhi Leonard, Mr. Free Agent signing of the summer, and you can't even get to a finals? Get out of my face. Playoff P? Playoff P. Poo poo. Yeah, got him. <laughs> Playoff P U. Uh, I did see Steve, or not Stephen A. Smith. Uh, Skip Bayless had a great take. If you wondered what went wrong in that game, by the way, Skip says, "I just figured out what I did wrong. I ran for an hour before the Clippers game 
Didn't have time to take a shower, so put on the Versace robe Lil Wayne gave me for Christmas. He's a Lakers fanatic. The gold robe jinxed me. Never again will I wear it during a Clippers game. That's three awesome brags oh in God. the same take on why the why he got jinxed by Lil Wayne's <laughs> Lakers robe. That's great. Uh, Luka's awesome. I love the Clippers because the Clippers are one of those teams that bring out like the worst takes in media because on paper they should be good. So now it's if they're not good, if they don't win this series, do they hate playing with each other? They hate each other. Mm -hmm. Who did playoff P fuck? Oh yeah, it, be, it like, very who did, quickly turns it's gonna, into like it's someone's say, yes. girlfriend got pregnant because with it makes no like hey, maybe they're just not that good. Mm -hmm. But no 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 no. They were supposed to be the best. This was supposed to be their town now, so we have to find a different reason for why they suck. We were led to believe is my favorite take because yeah. it's usually the people who did the leading to believe Correct. that then say we they were led, led to yes. We were told that they were going to be a superstar team that would win multiple titles. And it's like no, you you told us that yes. and then you incepted yourself into thinking everyone else Thought the same way you Correct. do, but yeah, it's the Eric Andre I, meme, I, I do, shooting yeah. him, being like, "How could you do this?" Exactly. I do think that, like, I, I have fun watching playoff P fail in the playoffs. Yeah, I'm starting to. I'm. It's kind I'm of. I'm not there, but I'm getting close. Picture me, actually feeling bad for playoff P. I'm not there yet. No, but picture me feeling yeah. bad for playoff P. At that point. You, and then yeah. switching back and forth between feeling bad and making fun of him mm -hmm. with my dick in your clip. <laughs> Uh, uh, I I didn't watch the uh, I didn't watch our Nuggets, but this is a matchup nightmare for them. So and also Melo, Melo, fucking putting it to the to the uh, Denver crowd mm -hmm. who were booing him. I love it. I CJ love Mello. too. Yeah, CJ as well. Wild. So yeah, wild. Very. He wild. played there. He was drafted. and now he's playing there. Wait, so when he against was... them, opponent locker room. Whoa! Wow, same building. Yes, they changed they the changed name. They changed the name. Now, now it's Ball. I it's, feel bad for Jokic because he's going to be like, remember that year when Dirk won the uh, MVP, but they were still giving out MVPs like during the second round? Like they physically were, and he had to go accept it uh -huh. even though they'd already been bounced? Mm -hmm. Like that's going to happen to Jokic. So you know what else is wild about Carmelo? So he played in that same building after mm -hmm. he was drafted. His coach in college, you guessed it, Buddy Bayham's dad. Oh. oh. Also, wait. Is it also Jimmy Beheim said? It is. Yeah. Oh, the same. wild, wild, crazy, wild. Small world, guys. All right. Um, the Sixers, Wizards, Bullets. In the playoffs, we call them the Bullets. The Bullets. Uh, I just love Ben Simmons' stat line. He that's the he most, also can't shoot free throws. That's the most Ben Simmons stat line ever. He went six points, fifteen rebounds, fifteen assists. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like how? He did shoot how? a three though. How do you? He's he really is. Like I, he might be the greatest basketball player who cannot score. I think of he, all time. I think he's kind of like he's broken like the he game. Used to be, you score. would think that it would be impossible for a guy that is bad at shooting to be an elite basketball player. Yeah, but he's somehow figured out a way to be insanely good at basketball while also not scoring points, which is like he's just such a good facilitator. Yeah, he is. He is like the uh, apex. Like there, there is that guy who exists. In every like pickup basketball game, who can do literally everything but shoot the basketball? And it's like, how does he just jump over everyone? Mm -hmm. How does he like dribble past everyone? But he can't shoot. He do just you, forgot that part of the game. What do you think would solve his? Because he obviously is like a very good athlete. Oh, he's so, an incredible. Athlete. So he's, he's got it. He's got, it he's got it. He's got it in yeah. his system. He's a great to defender. potentially be good at shooting a basketball. It's in there somewhere. Like a hypnotist. I kind of like the fact that like I I I feel like the Sixers maybe. I mean, we'll see because they're the one seed, and the East is kind of theirs to to win. Obviously, the Nets are loaded, but like maybe they figured it out that like just never expect Ben Simmons to score more than fifteen points, and you're good. He can do everything else. It's okay to do everything else. Yeah, he. I mean, he is an incredible defender, and I mean, you can't get like a more physically dominating point guard in, in like his height and everything. So maybe that's just the answer. I mean, obviously it helped that Tobias Harris went off, but him, him and Embiid though, shooting free throws at the end of a game. Is, yeah. It's a nightmare. It yeah. Just tough. take them both out. Yeah. That's your two best defensive guys. All right. And so we've, we've waited long enough. Let's talk about Bron Bron. I, that 
him dying. First, uh, first of all, is, is he, he going to no, be okay? No, no, first of all, I think <laughs> before we talk about LeBron, we should make sure, Jake, can you look up and, and make sure that LeBron James is healthy and that he doesn't have a, a serious injury that he sustained? I would feel bad personally joking about that if he was hurt, if he was like in the hospital. <laughs> What's the outcome of that? He's okay? Uh, his Wikipedia says he's alive. Okay. He should have been suspended for this game, by the way, for the tequila party. Uh, that is the funniest part to me because what would what would LeBron James have to do to get suspended by Adam Silver? Uh, if like shoot up an airport, kill Adam Silver's family. Adam Silver would be like, I I sympathize with the player's concerns over travel. But we really yeah, and we really need these ratings <laughs> for game one. Yeah. Uh, wait. So did you see the the theory that uh, it was a Kardashian setup because? That's her. Who? Which one? Kylie. Kendall dates Devin Booker, and it's Kendall's tequila, and mm-hmm. she was trying to get him suspended for game one. Mm-hmm. Which? Why would you do game one? Like the Lakers never win game ones, so or LeBron doesn't. Like that's his kind it's of his, his thing. thing. Yeah. Believe me, I've been on the other side of him when like the Bulls used to beat him in game one. I'd be like, this is the year. That was his feeling. It's gonna out happen. Game. Yeah, and then you just fucking rip your soul out. So the injury. Well, CP three. That was such a classic CP3 moment where it's like, oh, of course he's going to get injured, which I think still will happen, but uh, it was a freak thing. Sucks, but he came back, and I don't know how injured he is. But only to be upstaged by LeBron, which I – so put this clip – like actually put the clip, Liam, while we're talking about it. If you notice, so LeBron goes down after a guy who's like a foot smaller than him boxes him out. And LeBron's basically dead on the ground, sniper shot from the ceiling. A pretty much dislocated shoulder. Right. So he's got all the eyes on him. And then a funny thing happens. My man Campaign decides, you know what, I'm going to step up for my teammates. A little scuffle, a little brouhaha happens at around like the elbow three-point area, right? LeBron looks up and he sees... Oh, no, all the attention is off of me. So the scuffle happens. LeBron gets up. He walks over to where the scuffle happened, and then he collapses again at that exact spot so that everyone then looks at LeBron and his pretty much broken shoulder. Uh And I just have to say, chef's kiss, that was truly the goat of, like, LeBron, you know, Injury antics, which I I'm actually now getting to the point where I love it because it just adds such a funny element to the game. And of course, people say you guys are LeBron haters. Yes, I'm a LeBron hater, but I also admit that he's fucking insane, second best player of all time. Yada yada yada. If you can't at least laugh and be like, dude, this is ridiculous. The guy who never gets injured is always getting injured in the most horrific fashion. Oh, I, I flipped on LeBron's injury thing in the playing game when, when he like pull it up when, when he opened up his eyes and it looked like he was actually dead. He LeBron James thought that he was dead. Yes, during the play, like it was yeah, he got poked in the eye. But if you're inside his brain, he actually thought either he had been sucked into the vortex and he was playing with the Toon Squad again, or he thought that he was seriously dead. This- and he opens his eyes and it was a miracle. And and in his brain, it's a miracle that he was able to play in that game. In this game. I don't think he does it on purpose. I think it's just like part of his nature. Theatrics. This is, this is just what ever since he's been involved with the EPL. Yeah. He's like he's learned. He, he but he's been doing this forever. Remember when he dove into the cameras? Watch this, watch this. Ready? Okay, so he goes down. Yep. And he's writhing. And, and he's writhing in pain. Mm-hmm. And now okay, everyone's oh, watching no. LeBron. Oh no, the camera's going to this fight. And okay, campaign then he sits been, up. okay, wow, this fight, everyone's looking at this fight. LeBron is left uh, dying in the paint, and no one is paying attention to him. Uh-huh. This is tragic. LeBron then gets up, finds the, the energy to just walk over, and then gets the exact same spot where the scuffle happened, up, oh, and he's dead again. <laughs> and he goes back down on his knees, where he then has the trainers check him out at the scene of the, of the fight. It's uh, just, it is the most... <laughs> It was also, let's be honest. I can't get enough. Of it was it was kind of a borderline dirty play on Chris Paul. I can't on get the rebound. Of Did it. you see that? Yes. So like Chris Paul grabs him, tries to do the Kelly Olynyk, but Chris Paul is just too small that he can't. He's not strong enough to pull his arm out of his shoulder, and that's what sent him down onto the ground. So like I think you know what I think that's what LeBron was actually saying was the injury. I don't think it had anything to do with the fall. I think it was the pull that he was trying to embellish to the point. Of having like a stage two separation, right? Right. I just, oh my god, I was watching it, and it's truly like it. 
I know people always like, hey, you need to really appreciate living through the LeBron era. era. I appreciated that moment when he had the wherewithal to get up and get re-injured in the exact spot where all the action and cameras were. Mm-hmm. That is just truly special. Um, and and I know LeBron fans will be like, oh, you're, you know, stop talking about his fault. He makes it part of his game. It's fair game to talk about this because every game he dies. And every game he's awesome. And he's probably going – I, I responsibly, 1-800-GAMBLER if you have a problem, I think the Lakers game two is the lock of my lifetime. Like, I think they're, LeBron will answer. You know what I mean? And AD, like we said, like he forgets that he's a seven-footer. He thinks he's a mouse. He's an elephant. The Lakers will be fine in this series, and LeBron will start dominating, and it will all be for naught. But that, I mean, Suns, like it was fun to see the Suns, Suns crowd, their jerseys back in the playoffs, all that stuff. And they have a fucking good team. Their team is awesome. I disagree with you. I think the Suns are going to win. Really? I think they're going to win the series. I've just been down this path too many times. Like, it's just too many times for LeBron to give up game one and to be like, oh, there it is. The only thing is, I, I think he's met his match with Chris Paul. I feel I feel like they're two sides of the same coin. When he wants to take over, he can't. He is still when he wants to be the most dominating player. Like he, what he he scored eighteen points today. Like he didn't he didn't push it. He took thirteen shots. He didn't. He, he was didn't hung like, over, big cat. And it, AD was not good. AD would, like I do think that that obviously is LeBron can obviously only do so much at his age, which is a lot. But he does need Anthony Davis to play like peak Anthony Davis. And I'm sure that will happen too. And then the Lakers will win six or seven. And then we'll be like, oh, well, that was fun to think that the Suns had a chance. No, nope. Suns are going to win. Hold on. <laughs> this is Biz snoring. Oh, did he stop? All right, the Mecca. The Mecca is back. Mecca was rocking big time. Uh, the Knicks fan base. It's cool to see this. Uh, it's cute. Like, oh. Hmm. Oh. They're just happy to be here. Wow. You think that's cute? Oh, okay. Well, I saw they lost the game today. They did, yeah. yeah. They were in it. They had a chance to win. They didn't. Uh-huh. But isn't that... And there were so many Knicks fans that were like, that was so much fun. But I... This is awesome. I, I, don't, I didn't actually see any Knicks fans being I, like, this is so much fun. I'm just glad to be here. I saw a person that was there that was like, that was awesome. Trigger that was warning, their takeaway from the game. Trigger warning for Knicks fans, but I'm going to say this. Isn't the epitome of Knicks basketball being back is to have an awesome player go to the Mecca and just rip the soul out of all Knicks fans. Like, that's kind of Knicks basketball, at least since I've been alive. Mm-hmm. So, like, that's that actually should feel really back. Like, it, well, it should it's, feel it's really familiar. Comforting. Yeah, familiar. Like, oh, this is Reggie Miller or Michael Jordan or uh-huh. Scottie Pippen. Like, this is it. This feels good. The atmosphere did look cool, though. Like, having having the Mecca rocking like that. Yeah. And, it, and the Knicks... The Knicks lead the league, and and I, it's been so long since they've had a playoff game, and I'm it, it is fun. I'm rooting for them because I want Derrick Rose to do well, and I do love Tom Thibodeau, who needs to size up in his Q zip. He needs to. Like I'm sorry, but he needs to. He looks like a Pixar villain uh, when he's like squeezed into that thing. Yeah, a little bit. He, I think, yeah. like with a slick back hair and the French it's, last it, name and and the yeah. hard. Co- he's basically a hockey coach. Yeah. Right. Right, exactly. He is. He yeah. is a hockey coach. So I, I, I like the the suit not fit. If Tibbs rolled out there looking like GQ, yeah, that would be concerning to me. You, the players wouldn't play as hard for Tibbs if he wore an outfit that fit. I, I, I do think the Knicks are going to win this series. I do think they'll make adjustments, and I love that the Mecca has leads the league in dudes rocking jerseys with nothing underneath. It's fucking awesome, and it's. Every age. You see, like, uh, eight-year-olds, you can see 60 year old Wall Street guys, they got the jersey on, and they got no T-shirt underneath. Gold chain underneath, though. G- gold yeah, chain gold, works. Gold yeah. chain is the only but thing that's permitted. It, it's something about that look that brings, like, a springtime, summertime playoff energy that I love. Mm-hmm. I and just al- love it. it. Also, it's been a while since somebody has had to shush the crowd at MSG. Yeah. So, like, I, although Trey Young does need some work on his shushing, it was like his shush was... Yeah. Like his his finger was at his forehead. Basically, it was a weird shush. Yeah, uh, he was covering up the hairline. I think. Yeah, but it was weird shush. He needs work on that. But that kind of goes along with having a guy suck the soul out. Like get, getting shushed 
at MSG by an opposing player. I don't know, it brought back Reggie Miller to me a little bit. Yes, yes, exactly. And Spike Lee looking like, how could this happen? Mm-hmm. Well, it happens all the time. Mm-hmm. It's But it's good that it's happening. I, I, that's my point. I do want them to, to win. I want to see like multiple rounds of playoffs. I want to see Nets versus Knicks, which I think would only happen in the Eastern Conference Final. But that would be sick. Um, all right. Uh, and then the Jazz are playing right now. I don't know. They're the Jazz. I mean, they should be playing the, the Warriors. But again, I'm not going to say it. I'm not going to say that. It was cool that we had that Wednesday night moment. It's awesome that we don't have Steph Curry in the playoffs, even though they had the ace seat. Again, not going to say it. F1. Monaco. Monaco. Did we did we give him the PMT bump? I think so. Christian Hornier. We'll take credit for it. He pissed in the right toilet. He yep. found his lucky toilet, and Matt Verstappen, Verstappen. Max uh, Verstappen. took the checkered flag. Yes. And that was talking F1. They're back. Um, and then soccer ended today. But. By the way, I saw episode two. Yeah. Or no, no, episode four now. Okay. Fucking Renault with the with the contract dispute, and then they yeah. fucking get Ricardo. Yeah. Yeah. Spoiler exactly. alert. It's crazy. Well, yeah. If you haven't watched yet, but he's he's on that team, but and also the team has totally changed their name. Yeah, I noticed that today <laughs> when I was looking at the standings. I was like, now. I was like, where's Renault? Yeah. Yeah, but it's fun to talk F1, and also I learned what a gearbox is. Yeah, what is a gearbox? Because I, it's I a saw box a... of gears. Okay, <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> I, I I'm just so thrilled that I have a new uh, group of fans that I can just pretend I know what I'm talking about, and then them get mad at me, and then me be like, okay, whatever. Mm-hmm. Like I didn't even. Is Red Bull is Red Bull Racing bad for F1? No, but the 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 uh, constructors' cup is back on. Oh yeah, okay. that's, that's what they call it. Constructors. Second. Is it constructors? I think it's constructors, right? Did you seriously just look at me like I? What do you get when you win the constructor? Constructor. The constructor standings. Yeah, oh, constructor standings. Yeah, yeah. The, the I table. just added a cup. But that's it's, fine. It's the table. Yeah, yeah. But there's two tables. Yeah. There's right. the the singular table, and then there's the team table. Right, team table. Yeah, Max Obviously. Verstappen is is on the top of the regular. Well, he's the, not a the great teammate. Person, yeah. Oh, Biz just got a text. No, he got a notification. Okay. I think, uh, I think after the interview, we should tell him what happened with McDavid at the end of his game. Oh, what, what happened? happened? We'll save it. Teaser. Well, hey, so tell us what happened. happened. No. Oh, just, okay. We'll say. Yeah, he got. Uh, no. Well, something did happen. They lost. They oh. they blew a four-one lead. Oh wow. Okay. All what right. would, would McDavid do? Well, he's he just, retired. His team, yeah, his team is fucked. He decided to retire. He quit. He took his jersey off. Yeah. <laughs> he said, I'm out of here. All right, let's do our who's back of the week. Then we have Biz. Uh, and then at the end, we'll we'll wake him up. We'll do a little Monday reading, and we'll do a little I Had Another Kid talk. All right. Who's back of the week is brought to you by Cash App. The stock market, investing through Cash App, buying and selling Bitcoin, that is all back. Yeah, you can do it all on the Cash App. It's super easy to do. It links directly to your bank account. It's awesome. So go check out the Cash App, buy and sell Bitcoin, uh, and play some stock market. And of course, when you download the Cash App, enter the referral code Barstool, you get ten dollars uh, for free. Ten dollars to the ASPCA. Download the Cash App from the App Store, or Google Play Store today, and get involved with our friends at the Cash App. Also, shout out the Cash App. They're the ones who got us uh, Christian Horner on Friday. So if you like that interview, if you want us to talk about F one, please support the Cash App. Okay, Hank. Who's back? Uh, my who's back. I have a couple. First one's chugging beers. Yugging uh, or beers. chugging? Yugging. I mean, it's part of it's Both of my who's backs are, are crowd-related, uh, but that's just, you know, Taylor Luan, our co-worker, busting with the Taywin. boys. Mm-hmm. Taywan. Taywan Luan. <laughs> Taywan. Uh, well, what, was, about, what about Zach Wilson? He didn't yug a beer. He yugged a H2O. He yugged a water. True. Really? That's responsible. Yeah, because he's Mormon. Love it. Mm-hmm. Uh, then my other who's back is old jerseys. I thought it was because he was under 21. Oh, he might be. He, he definitely. That's actually not a bad explanation. If I were him, I would give that because he twenty one. He would definitely get carded, right? If he went to try to buy a beer and he could be like, "I didn't have my ID on." Right. Old jerseys. I was on the way to work today. I saw a guy in a Porzingis jersey. Yeah, the Porzingis uh, one makes Calderon. no sense. Yeah, like there's. I think it's. I think it's because of the pandemic. You know, people haven't been going to games. Haven't been buying jerseys. So it's like you basically have a two year. Window. Two year window where you're like, oh fuck, let's just go and and you know it's been two years, so that player might not be on the team anymore. Mm-hmm. But it's also something that's fun about going to games in general, where it's like you walk around and you see at any game the most random old jerseys. Uh, but it's one of those little, you know, one of those little quirks you kind of forgot about with crowds not being around mm-hmm. that 
it's fun to see again. Lollapalooza yeah. is going to be a big city for that. No, but Porzingis was like the guy here. For yeah. A, yeah. Oh yeah. A minute. The unicorn. unicorn. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. Good job, Hank. Nice, Hank. Did you have a good weekend? It was all right. Friday yeah. night, you showed your ass. Yep. Yeah. On a live stream. Congratulations. Thanks. I didn't think that you had that dump. No. Yeah. A little junk in the trunk. A little cake. Did you have any? Was it true that you had some streak marks? No. Okay. I just I w thank you for addressing that. You're welcome. I, I also um, <laughs> I invited Hank to hang out with me on Friday after the stream, and he just never replied to me. So I think that's that's a feather. Oh well, you can thank Biz. I mean, we were doing a lot of pink Whitney shots. I was pretty buckled by the end of the game. I just went yeah. home and, and went to sleep. Okay. And, responsible. And yeah. Responsible Hank. Somewhat responsible. Yeah. Biz kind of they put me in a blunder. Yeah. Yeah. That will happen. Uh, my who's back of the week is cicadas. Mm. Cicadas are officially back, and. A couple of weeks ago when we talked about cicadas, I said be on the lookout for cicada content because we hadn't had like a cicada resurgence since the blogosphere has really been a thing. Cicada content is way more fucked up than I thought it was going to be. Like there's some cicada freaks out there. There's been a guy, just waiting to shine. There's a guy that's like making action figures of like demonic uh, like characters and comic book characters out of cicada shells. It's fucking disturbing. <laughs> of course, there's like all sorts of cicada like recipes and like ways to cook them and ways to prepare them and right. fun things like that that are kind of gross. But like we predicted that. I did not think that the internet had freaks that would basically like jack off to cicada porn. Ugh. Just Weirdos. Look, look up look up the cicada shell action figures. Yes. It's Ugh. frankly disturbing. Ugh. Uh, is that it? Who's back? Yeah. Who's My, back? Well, also Man City. Man City's back. Yeah, they are. What'd they do? They won, won top of the table for EPL. Nice. Man City, bitch, man. Ooh. Man City, bitch. Yeah, Swans might said, be coming you said, up. You said soccer ended today. Who won? Uh, Man City. Yeah. Top of the table. Swans might be coming up next Saturday. They play uh, a game to decide if they're coming up at Wembley. No big deal. Uh, all right. My who's back is uh, just a whoa stat for you. Um there was on Friday, no, Thursday maybe, the 20,000th MLB player of all time debuted, which is fucking crazy that if you think about it, this goes back to, I don't know, 1870 or something, mm -hmm. 20,000 players, that's it. So if you took every player who's appeared in a single game of Major League Baseball, they wouldn't even come close to filling a Major League Baseball stadium. When you put it that way, it's kind of weird. It's crazy to think tw only 20,000 players mm -hmm. have ever played Major League Baseball. It also puts into perspective just how incredible of a human being Dan Heron is. Correct. Because he's one of 20,000. 20, and really, he's more like one of like 5,000 who were like really good at baseball. And Dan Heron has gotten hits off of... What, two of those? Th yes. Maybe upwards of five of yeah. those 20,000. What was the Albert Pujols stat? He's gotten hits off like 9% of anyone that's ever pitched in Major yeah. Baseball. Not really that impressive. Well, it's not imp as impressive when you realize that like for 75 of like the 150 years of baseball, it was pretty much just like the Yankees playing the Dodgers every yeah. year. Yeah. There were like three guys named gentlemen that were, that yeah. were pitching. Yeah. Yeah. A guy yeah. with three and fingers. The, the best the player pirates, in baseball yeah. had three fingers for like a decade. Yes. Yeah. Uh, but that's just a crazy stat. Twenty thousand. Because you think you, I would have guessed way more if I had like if I had no knowledge of it. Mm -hmm. Thinking about one hundred and fifty years of the game being played. Twenty thousand. It is wild. Twenty thousand. Uh, it was a backup catcher for the Seattle Mariners, which is kind of cool. Did he got into. The he game? was the twenty thousandth player to appear in a game. Does he get? Does he win anything? Is it like at a supermarket so. when yeah. you're their millionth customer? I wonder how many of those twenty thousand like only played like less than ten games. Yeah, just got up. a cup of coffee. Guys. Yeah, yeah, cup of coffee. Like in the middle MLB reliever. is such a cool thing to say. I actually I saw an, an article the other week and I I wanted I meant to click on it and I feel bad that I didn't click on it. So if somebody could summarize it for me, but basically saying like if you get labeled as a middle reliever in baseball, you're fucked. Yeah, unless you unless you go out there and you have a streak of like yeah, twenty all, awesome yeah. games in a row as middle reliever, you're fucked, and you're just gonna like move around for the rest of your career, and you'll pitch two innings a game like every other game because no one wants to actually pay you like real money. You'll so never you just go. Yeah, you'll never become a closer. You'll never become a starter. I think cup of coffee in, in Major League Baseball might be the coolest. Like not like coolest. Like I was an athlete, but not I didn't I wasn't like a star kind of thing to say. Yeah, maybe. Maybe drafted in in like I don't know 
maybe drafted in the NBA or NFL. But then, then people are like, what went wrong? Yeah, how come you didn't last? Cup of coffee in Major League Baseball means like you climbed it, like you did it, you 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 went through right. There's some way more shit. There's way more grinders than right. The, than, and be, and a, oh my god, MLB versus right. like the mm-hmm. NBA or NFL right. because right. it's just like there's so many less people. You have to be super talented just to get in, yeah. right? And then you usually flame out. Right. It would also be sick if you were like a running back that scored. I don't know, like you're a backup running back that got in, scored a few touchdowns, and became like a fantasy must start for like three games to right. end out a season, right? And then no one ever heard from you again. Yes, because that would be then cool. you'd at least have like a built-in fan base of guys who're like Peyton Hillis. Thank you for that winning whole me. season. Yeah. Yeah. What's his name? Uh, Gray. Uh, Jonas, Jonas, Gray. Jonas Gray, yeah. He was on the cover of Sports Illustrated, right? Yeah. Yeah. He slept was, in. Yeah. Um, Jake, who's your who's back? I have one. Did you guys see this Mariners lineup first? You're talking about the Mariners. There's like two or three guys that I think are like recognizable names. Let me see it. Let me see it. I'll tell you. Donovan Walton, leadoff hitter. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mitch Hanniger, okay. Kyle Seeger. Kyle Seeger's Kyle, recognizable. Yeah, Kyle Lewis. Yeah. I've heard of those three then. Jose Godoy. Sam. That's the guy. That's yeah. the, that's the twenty yeah. thousand. Yeah, Jose Godoy. Right, twenty thousandth. Sam Haggerty, Jacob Nottingham, Jack Mayfield, and Justin Dunn. Hmm. And they had, but they had some kid who came up recently, who's like supposed to be a superstar. I don't the know. Mariners are low key, and then, this is now a, just a direct there, shot at our friend Spencer Hawes, who may or may not be trying to get Kwame Brown on the show. Jared Kellenick, the one from the Jared Kellenick, Mets, he's going right? to be sick. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the Mariners are like one of those teams. It's kind of like Minnesota sports and the Seattle Mariners. You don't really understand the sadness until you actually like look into it a little bit, and you're like, oh shit. They haven't been in the playoffs ever since 2001. Pretty much never. Yeah. And they and they had Ken Griffey Jr. and Randy Johnson and A Rod. I mean that team was and, one. And, and you could just Martinez. name guys. Jay Buhner. Yeah. And like they had all those. They had Ken Griffey Jr. Oh, Tino A-Rod, Martinez. A, was Tino on it? Yeah, I think he was. Ichiro. E, e, yeah, I mean that's later. But yeah, I'm yeah. saying like they had A Rod and Ken Griffey Jr. and Randy Johnson. And Edgar Martinez, all at like the height of their powers. Those are four Hall of Famers, and nothing to show for it. Mm-hmm. That's it's sad. So I didn't mean to do that. That was a complete tangent. I apologize to Mariners fans. That's complete assault. But it's more actually saying we feel your pain. When was the last time they went to the playoffs? Two thousand one. And what was their record? Was that the sixteen? That was the year, yeah. They lost to the White Sox, right? Uh, in the first yeah. round. No, they lost to the Yankees in the ALCS. In the ALCS. Okay, never mind. They beat the White Sox in the first round, maybe? They beat the Indians. I'm just White everybody. Sox was the I year think you're thinking. They I think you're thinking Indians. of the year they yeah. broke the record. Yes, that's right. And then they lost in the first round. Yes. Yeah. They, was that the year before? 2000? Yeah, 2000, yeah. What, they, what was their record? 91 and 71. Okay. So that wasn't the record. No, the ne- it was 01 was 116. 116. And 46. Holy shit. Yeah. That's insane. They had yeah. a couple years where they were really, really good and missed the playoffs, too. 116 by, by wins, luck. though? 116. They lost the AL Championship Series. So they did win around. They won around in the playoffs. But it's been in 20 years. won in 2000. It's been 20 years. And I then, remember I went, to, I went to a game out there like three years ago. Awesome great, ballpark. Great park. Great food. Great food. Yeah. Great park. Really cool. Highly recommend it. But I looked up, and there was like a banner that said AL West. 2001 or whatever it might not even been the AL West then um and I was like holy shit is that the last time they went to the playoffs and it was and then and they, this is your sad they've Mariners won time. like mid 90s amounts yeah, this of is games really sad I'm a sorry couple times and they I missed apologize. the playoffs when that happened I really apologize oh, they know they know no Mar- I know Mar- but it's just very sad yes, to the, like say but they, I, you know what they probably appreciate the fact that it's Correct. being brought up because sometimes when you're playing out west on a team that's as unremarkable as the Mariners are you kind of you lose that vibe of being like the most lovable losing franchise. But they have like a coolness factor That's because of Ken Griffey Jr. They should be lovable losers yes. at this point. And it, it really is. It's more shining a light like when you t- when you talk about like these certain cities where you're like, oh yeah it's worth, like we always talk about Cleveland or we always talk about, you know, the Bills, like, but no, there are some there's some really bad ones out there. Mm-hmm. Um, Alright. Enough of that. Let's do our interview with Paul Bissonette and then we're going to wake him up. And that should be very exciting. Uh, our interview with Biz was brought to you by our friends at Bose. You got to check out Bose. Bose Quiet Comfort Earbuds are the world's most effective noise canceling earbuds out there. Uh, if you're trying to, you know, maybe block out the noise on the subway, if you're going for a run uh, along, like, you know, a lake path or something, 
you know, maybe you're just walking down the street and trying to get rid of the noise out there, or maybe you're at a busy work. I know our work, our office is very busy, always buzzing. It's good to have those Bose Quiet Comfort earbuds because Bose Quiet Comfort earbuds deliver world class noise canceling, elevating your focus. They provide crisp, clear sound wherever you are. They're super comfortable, and the touch controls are easy to use. They're great for any phone calls you need to make. And if you want to get yourself a pair of Bose, have uh, go to Bose.com/barstool. That's B-O-S-E dot com slash barstool to rule the quiet with your own Bose Quiet Comfort earbuds. Uh, do I have any in here? I don't know. I do have a pair at my desk. I love my Bose Quiet Comfort earbuds. I wear them whenever the office gets a little too loud. So go check them out. Bose dot com slash barstool to rule the quiet with your own Bose Quiet Comfort earbuds. Okay, here he is. Paul missed the net. Okay, we now welcome on uh, the man. <laughs> The myth, the legend. He I'm just running, farted. I'm running on fumes I, right now. I literally way. just farted his entire way into the studio. <laughs> outside, no, no, no. And outside I the door. Outside the door. Did it trail me? <laughs> oh, yeah. I heard it, and then I was like, oh, yeah. No, 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 oh, yeah. I'm getting it now. Ass. Yeah, I got a little uh -huh. bit. It's Paul Bissonnette. You can probably smell it through your it earphones. Yep. It got caught in the tracksedo shorts. <laughs> I tried to I tried to give it the old Is there anything worse? There's nothing worse than being like, all right, I'm doing the right thing. I'm going to fart outside of the room and just having it just tail you all the way I actually didn't give one fuck. I wish okay. I would have let it rip right in the middle <laughs> of the room. You should have. If you got another one, just let it go. <laughs> Biz is beaming right now. He says that he's running on fumes, but this is, this is Biz Nasty and his element. He's done four streams in four days. Yeah. An Iron Man streak, some may say, I just will I, never be up, beaten up, by anybody. Up. Hardest working I, I man would in say media. Phil Mickelson, Paul Bissonette achievement this week. No, you. Four you, straight yeah, days, kind of like a major. Yeah, yeah. But so, not. This is actually technically five. This is and, your fifth. And and should we talk about it or is this a ses sensitive subject because he he beat? Uh, we already won. talked about it on the show earlier. Yeah, oh, I don't know you why you're coming at Brooks. We I'm brought not. you on to talk about NBA. So is LeBron James <laughs> the toughest person in sports? <laughs> I haven't been following any basketball. All right, yeah, let's talk some hockey. Hockey, let's hockey talk some has hockey. taken you over are, the sports universe. You are a Twitter account right now. You are the person that we were talking about on the yeah. show that replies to Big Cat and says, NBA's irrelevant. Talk, about ba talk about hockey. <laughs> Why are you talking about But here NBA? we are. Let's talk about some hockey. I actually have some questions. Where do we start? Would you want to start with the question we asked right before uh, this whole started, this whole, whole uh, taping started? You looked up. You saw the Avs closed out the yeah. Blues. I wasn't even paying attention. Is to anyone series. beating the Avs? I don't know. But I tell you what, everybody in hockey has been waiting for Avalanche, Golden Knights. And I think everybody was skeptical on whether it was going to happen. Minnesota came in with a bit of a wagon. They made a late push in the, at the season where everyone was like, oh, geez, are they going to knock off Vegas? I think it's going to be Vegas, Colorado, and it's going to be a juggernaut of a series, and we are going to see it. You think yeah. whoever wins that series wins a cup? I think that those are two of the biggest heavyweights. The only, I mean, we talked about, I think last time I came on the show when I predicted that the um, Philadelphia Flyers are going to win the Stanley Cup. You just did that to yourself. <laughs> I don't remember that at all. Like, you just self-owned it. I thought maybe some team from the North would have an, a, an easy entry to the Final Four where they wouldn't have been tested as the Abs or Golden Knights would in the second round. What? So, wait, uh, the other It kind of sucks that the two best teams get to go face off in the second round. Yep. But and also that John Tavares got hurt and is probably out. Do you think he's out for the playoffs? I would assume. I mean, that was. I don't know. They bad. said no structural damage, but I mean, with concussions and how serious it was, and then and then actually there was reports that came out afterward about how his knee had been injured. Now, Ooh. well, yeah, his knee probably got injured because look, I'm not telling the the equipment staff. Yeah, I'm not a trainer. Trainers, either, what but, to do? But that was that was a lot of dead weight. <laughs> He look when they little, went to try to like little. they picked him up like a puddle they tried to pick him up like yeah. he was mm -hmm. water and he was just flopping everywhere because he was very concussed it was basically will ferrell in in uh <laughs> the flint tropics whatever that movie is where yeah, they're right. just like dangling yeah. him yeah. they were playing origami with uh, Tavares's <laughs> yes. body what does that mean yes. when you say no structural damage <clears throat> but he has a concussion where does it what what is part of the structure well i, th well, I thought originally they thought that maybe his orbital bone had yeah. been smashed ah. because his knee hit him right in the face right so mm -hmm. no structural damage damage is important but as far as a concussion is concerned it could be yeah it could be three to four weeks based on like how that that looked mm -hmm. what'd you think about the fight after because i know there okay. was a lot of people right. who were very upset about they it like, i think oh. it's partly because it's Corey perry which i understand yeah. and there was a lot of people like what are you doing there's like that's not going to make john Tavares come back but I, I the way i saw it was 
It's guys who are competing at a high level, playoff hockey, emotional. You don't know that it was a complete accident. And then your initial reaction is, we got to defend our fucking guy. Fair. Mind you, at the face-off circle, Felino said, I know it was an accident, but oh, I have to do this. So there's okay. so, so many variables. Okay, so that is then like so, old-school meatball shit. It's the most hockey thing ever. Yeah. Be like, hey, no hard feelings, but let's I didn't know he said sure. that. I didn't know he said I'm sure, going to punch you in the face. No offense. All, all variables considered. Felino comes over from Columbus. He wants to make an impact. First series, the captain gets knocked out. It happens to a guy who's a bit of a – he's a heel. Corey Perry. He is. Yes, he, that's what I'm saying. It's it's it, there are certain guys when they hit someone even if it's an accident, you just assume he did it on purpose. Yeah, Corey so he, Perry's so, in that category. So he, he so he wants to implement a little bit of pain to Corey Perry for implementing pain to his team in a sense. And on the flip side of that is when something like that happens in the midst of a game, let alone a playoff game, the 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 both benches are completely depleted because they're both concerned about the health of, of the player. In my opinion, that Felino fight right off the faceoff with Corey Perry completely re resets the mindset of both teams to we're right back in the midst. This is playoff hockey. Not to say it didn't happen, but we're trying to forget about it as soon as possible. So I actually like that. I, th I thought the rest of the game was awesome. It was very competitive, given the fact that something as serious as that uh, and and the the, the 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 game got fucking kind of timed out for what. 15, 20 minutes mm -hmm. as, right. he, as he took the iron pony off the ice. So it's and almost like it a was kickstarter back into it was the game. A, it was a kickstarter back into the game, and, and the fact that he gave the thumbs up on the way out, I think let his own team know, hey, I'm, I'm going to be all right. So it, 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 it was it, it was very sad in one sense, but it, it was nice to see the game get back going in the other. Mm -hmm. What about the uh, the Caps Bruins series? I'm just going to assume it's it's the first intermission right now. Uh, it's 0-0. Zero, zero. Caps have looked pretty bad well, in, their, time traveling. In, in their last four periods of hockey. Because at the I'm, beginning of the yeah, show, the you might show, be I already doing talked soggy about sorrows. It, but I'm already accepting the fact that the Caps will probably lose this game. Yeah. They're like 99% chance going to lose this series because they don't look like themselves. They look old. They look they're, injured. They're banged up. They're very banged up. Thank you. Okay, so that's the spin zone. That's that, a I, that's I was a wondering what spin zone I was going to use. But if we were at full strength, then this is a different series. Uh, apparently, Oshie's banged up. Uh-huh. And, um, yeah, it's just – it's not their year. So, when it comes to Ovi – This is the start a, of their championship TV. He's TDA. a free agent. It could be. Yeah, yeah, it could be. It's not their year. Paul Bissonnette, who said it's the Flyers. You year. know what? And you could say I took that personally. <laughs> you fucking asshole. <laughs> so, what happens What happens after the season? Because Ovi's a free agent going into this offseason. Uh, he's going he, to Buffalo. Shut up. <laughs> I, I think I'd That's probably be rumor. okay with that. I'd probably be fine with, with Ovi going to the Sabres. But I, I don't want to see him play for another team. Do you think that – because he said it's like I either want to play for the Capitals or I want to play in Russia for the rest of my career. Do you see him going somewhere else? Yeah, Russia. Okay. Yeah, he's gonna so be there playing. you go. I'm fine with that. Him and Putin team up for like 20 combined goals <laughs> yeah. a game. Where what uh, where where'd you land on the Tom Wilson shit? I know where Whitney was. I mean, take a guess where Biz. Well, no, I, I think I was in here when it all happened. No, yeah. no, no, no. Like I'm saying, that the, was another Tom Wilson. The Rangers, yeah, Tom oh. Wilson, a <laughs> with the Rangers. Where did you land? I know we know where you know Whit landed. I, I landed on the fact that uh, Panarin went spider monkey on his back, and right. and, and, and in the heat of the moment, he threw him off. And I, as a Rangers fan, yeah, I probably wouldn't be happy, but yeah, I thought I thought I thought that no suspension was the right call, and um, and that was it. We moved on. Yeah, and. Do you think that there's, like, so it feels like, obviously, they've phased out fighting in hockey, and part of, like... That's not true. Well, it's definitely different than well, it if was you 10 the analytics, years ago. Well, if you check the analytics to this year, it, it rise like, 40%. Really? And people credit it to the fact that it was all this individual in yes. division play. Yep. But I think that uh, I think that the hate has has brewed back up in the NHL, and you're seeing it in these playoffs, and that's why more so than any sport, I think that that hockey has like it it, it just rises to another level when it gets to playoff hockey. Every fucking whistle, there's a scrum. The hatred is real. Every series in the first round is competitive, un, un, unlike well, the, 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 the sick just, league where it's uh, half the, the series are four zero. The abs just and swept then, the Blues. <laughs> That's correct. Yeah, that's the one. The one well, sweep of, of the series. That's because the Abs are in fact a juggernaut. What about this, Biz? I think that there's more fighting in hockey this year because it's kind of a backlash. The players are backlashing against the media because the media has gotten so soft. Correct. When it like you've got the number one uh, hockey podcast spitting chicklets, basically neutering the game, 
and trying to take all the physicality out of it. And the players are out there and they're like, you know what? We're going to prove to you that this is still a physical game, even though the yeah. media is trying to drag us in this one direction. Do you agree with that? I 100% agree with you that. You can't play the game on a spreadsheet. You cannot. That's, I mean, there's, I, I do think that <clears throat> less fighting than 20 years ago is good, but you'll never get it all the way out of the game, nor should it be all the way out of the game. Now, you say that half-jokingly where the media kind of brought it to this place, and obviously concussions are at the forefront right now and everybody's trying to understand what's going on with that, but I think that for, for a period of time, everyone was kind of in this like neutral standpoint of like, uh, is the game getting a little bit softer? Should we maybe take out the fighting? Eh? And it's gone right back the other way. But, but your explanation of the Corey Perry situation it, you know, in that series between the, the Leafs and, and the Canadiens was a perfect example of like a player's perspective versus a media's perspective where I didn't, you know, I'm well, not thinking. Media members were going, why is, why why is, is he this fighting? happening? It's like, and what you just well, said. Well, there's a lot of reasons. You had 20 minutes. Felino needs to prove himself right. to his new franchise to say I'm fucking here and I'm ready right. to stick up for my teammates. On the flip side of that, you got a guy in the other team who I would assume most guy in the Leafs locker room hate his guts, which most other members in the league hate his guts. Right, Corey Perry, because Fact. he every time he shows up to to play in a game, he's showing up to win. And whether that's landing on the goalie, taking a sh cheap shot here, taking a cheap shot there. And that was their response. And, and even though it was an accident, I thought it reset the tone to the yes. series, and I thought it was the right play. But that's the part that, that I think everyone misses the, what you said. The like, you got twenty minutes. You're just standing around on the ice, you know, hoping that John Tavares is okay. The Bruins just scored, uh, hoping John Tavares is okay, and then you got to kind of be like, "Hey, guys, let's get back into this. Like, it's playoff hockey," and that kick started it. So, um, I do appreciate your perspective on that. I have a question about the Lightning, who also. That is another series. So, actually, if you actually look at it, I think it's going to be Avs sweep. If the Bruins win this, that'd be 4-1. If the Lightning win their next one, that'd be 4-1. But you're right. Everything's competitive. Um, I think I think the Lightning are only up 2-1 right now. I thought they were up 3-1. I thought they were up 3-1, too. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. I'm, I'm, three, yeah, oh, was there a game this You've afternoon? You've been doing a lot of streaming. You've been doing so yeah. many streams. Okay, well, it's probably hard. Well, actually, yeah, I think, they, I think they added up Lightning. What did you think stuff? about the complaints about the Kucherov like, coming in? Well, now he's hurt, but uh, the salary cap. Because I know people were pissed about it. I personally uh, think that you can't complain about it because those are the rules. Also, as a Blackhawks fan, the Blackhawks the Blackhawks did the exact same thing in 2015 with Kane. So, uh, for people who don't know, in the NHL, the salary cap uh, is doesn't exist for the playoffs. So the argument is Kucherov. Well, does it exist in any league? No, but I'm saying like you can have you can be over the cap in the playoffs. Well, can you get penalized for that in, in uh, NBA? Yeah, you can't be. Yeah, I think there's like a. Okay. I think you have to be under the cap, or there's a luxury. Oh, tax. okay, I didn't know. But that. either way, the in the NHL, you can put someone on long term, you know, injured reserve, and their money doesn't count, and then sign a bunch of guys, and then when you get to the playoffs, if they get healthy. Oh wow! Now, you, like I think the Blackhawks were about they, five million over the cap. Yeah, they activated in 2015. Like, yeah, they activated them as the playoffs are kicking what off. What are you saying, Hank? It's two one. Oh, it's in the Lightning series. Oh, really? Are you sure? That's a loud two one. That three is one? a loud three. I'm pretty sure it's three one. Hank, did they play? That, they, I think they played this after. Yeah, they're, they're three one. Three one. It's three one. You missed the game. Oh god, I got my bad. <laughs> you're, you're wow, the Hank. So Thanks you're, you're cool there, with Hank. it though, because I know some people were so complaining. Is, is he the statistician? Well, Jake no, doesn't Jake have a microphone Jake, yeah. right now, but Jake, right after Hank oh, said that, puking. Jake shook his head. He was like, factually incorrect. Should we have a wrestling match right here <laughs> yeah, to, he'll to solve fuck this? You up. Jake will fuck you up. Biz, no, no, do you me, think they'll me, fix that? Do you, Hank. do you think they'll fix that? That that like salary cap gymnastics? I think that yeah, I think maybe the next CBA they'll address it. There was things that they had to address last time. Every time there's a few GMs who they, 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 they'll they read the whole CBA negotiation and they'll find a way to manipulate it. Right. Whether it's like eating you know other teams, players that, that can't be in the lineup in order to gain draft picks and take on that salary. I mean, the Coyotes have done it a few times. They took on Hosa. Uh -huh. They took on Datsuk. They mm -hmm. took on the end of uh, Chris Pronger's contract. Yeah, you guys are dominant. Yeah. <laughs> you found all the loose Just a bunch of Hall of Famers ago, yeah. playing a game for the organization. <laughs> yeah. Chris Pronger. <laughs> Raise their jersey to the Raptors. So, uh, all right. It, I've accepted the fact that 
my team's not going to go anywhere. Big Cat doesn't have a, a dog in the fight. I think you felt Hank, it Hank when is, it was Hank your is, year. I did. I did. Hank is a, a Bruins guy, so I guess technically he's still in, but who knows because the Capitals aren't shit and they beat them in the first round. Jake's Panthers are but, down Jake's Panthers are down or bad. 3-1, depending on who you believe. Right. So uh, <laughs> I, I guess I'm asking who, who would be a good bandwagon team for us to hitch ourselves to because I think we said at one point we would be a Maple Leafs as our Canadian team, but now it's like now that Tavares is gone – not looking so great for them. Should we stay with them? Personally, I'm going to just go with uh, the sport of hockey because I don't know if you know, but like playoff hockey is just different. I'm cheering maybe, for a respectful handshake line. Yeah. Maybe Vegas because they, they delivered your first Oh, that's true. Stanley I do Cup. owe them, yeah. 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 Well, Snap I, it around. Flower, I don't like Flurry. He just he broke my heart too many times. There's some, there's some history there. I could get the Avalanche, like they, they're a young, fun team. I mean, McKinnon, what? He, I, think he's, I think he's leading the – the playoffs and goals right now. Yeah. It's, He's it's a, a team awesome. sport. I don't look at the no- individual numbers. That's spoken like a guy who never scored a goal. Yeah. Seven. I want seven? Seven goals. What was your best goal? You should, you should also add, like, as the years go on, no one will know. Like, if you just say, no, hey, yeah. next year when we're doing Hockey this, like, I heard, I heard I had 12. My, People wouldn't no, know. Seven, and my best one was against the San Jose Sharks, and I chased the goalie. The goalie got pulled after I scored against him. Hell I think yeah. the coach was like, yo, if this guy's fucking scoring, yeah. then you're out of here. You're, What'd you do? Retire. Set, set me up. Walk me through like what was going on in your head for your best goal ever. It was uh, the first game after All-Star break. Um, I was My legs were cramping up because I drank a lot in Vegas, and we ended up uh, you know, having a good time during that All-Star break, and then... We were in the offensive zone against San Jose. I think it was in the first or second period, actually. And Oliver Ekman Larson set me up in the slot, and I just, it was the perfect setup. And I ended up going to top cheese, and it made it 3 nothing. Top and then, cheese? Were you meaning to? Yeah, I think, yeah, I think so. In that moment, <laughs> yes. And then uh, we went Did up. Did you have a Sully ready to go? We, we, went up, we went up 3 nothing, and then. Oh, here we go. And then they Jake's scored. Got, the, got, the, got it right here. Yeah, there you go. And then, uh, and then they scored five unanswered, and we lost. But I had my guy, and. Uh, <laughs> I you scored five on answer. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Damn. Top cheddar. There's Niemi getting pulled. There's Woo! Niemi. You were jacked. Up. I had my guy. High fives to the bench. Todd McClellan water bottle swig. Get, Get him the out the of fuck there. out of here. Get him out of Let's there. Let's see the replay here. All right. That was Oliver Ekman Sick Larson. assist. Boom. Who's in goal? That that's your best goal ever, huh? Yeah, Niemi. Nice. I think he Niemi, ended up. Yeah. I think he won a cup with the, yes, the Chicago Blackhawks. Yeah. That was this was after. So during the Blackhawks runs, were you like, were you just following them around, trying to ride, ride on their coattails? Patrick Sharp was uh, probably the nicest person of all time. Have you you guys have had him on Spit and Chicklets? No, I don't. Th- uh, maybe before I was on. He uh, he basically was like, "Yeah, you can come hang out." And when they won in thirteen and fifteen, just like there was a moment where I was on the bus, and it was like the whole team and just me. And Kane was like, what are you fucking doing here? <laughs> I was like, <laughs> Sharp invited me. <laughs> he gave me the what the fuck. Oh, are yeah. You? He was like, who the fuck brought the blogger? I was like, Sharp did. <laughs> <laughs> Which was but, fair for him, but, especially because like, the media doesn't re- didn't, wasn't really nice to Patrick Kane. Did, did he warm up after yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Big time. Yeah, big he's time. probably like, oh, I yes. just called this guy a blogger. I should <laughs> probably be nice to him. I mean, I was. That was my entire job then, so it was totally so fair. You, now are you guys playing tummy sticks like, who? via DM? You, who? And, you and Patrick Kane? Uh, I mean, I, I haven't talked to him in a while. I think if I saw him on the street, he would say, what's up? Yeah. You saw him during his crazy days too. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. He's cleaned her up quite a bit. Yes. I think he has a kid. Yeah. Yeah. And and should we? Oh, no, mention? no, no, don't die. It wasn't a setup. That, that was just a segue. Be, to that die. was literally yeah, we me just saying. Already Kane has a big cat on earlier the, on the podcast. You uh, dump loads, have, we get it. Having a kid is <laughs> means nothing to everyone else. You dump heavy loads, we get it. We call him the rope man. <laughs> the heavy, is there, heavy is, there a, is there a process to impreg- impregnating a girl? Like, do you you guys like, like what's like you what? definitely when a man and a woman love each other? No, I know, but like, do you know? Do you think you'll ever be a father? I maybe. Yeah. But I'm saying it's like when you know you want to get pregnant, like you go out together and like drink wine one night and like, you know, go for a nice dinner and then you just come home and you just raw dog, <laughs> just dumping load after load and just hoping it co- connects. That was so romantic. <laughs> Is that how it goes? Yeah. And then a light bulb goes off. I've it's al- like, boom. Yeah. I've always wondered like it, when you are getting a girl pregnant, do you know like the second after it happens? No. Do you walk yeah. away? You're like, no. Kobe. Are you dropping Peter North loads? Are you dropping big heavy ones? <laughs> 
Dude, Peter North is part of this show lore. He's Canadian. He's part of this show lore. We showed him to uh, Scott Van Pelt on uh-huh. our one episode. You guys should get him on and ask how he was able to like, I would, collect we I want that. We also remember. showed him the MILF Hunter on the show because that guy went off the grid. Like, nobody has ever disappeared harder than No, he MILF pops Hunter up has. every now and then. I need people to interview have picture, him. People will like take pictures of him with him like in like Florida. I think he lives in Key West. Peter North, we show, We also is showed, his cock, we showed his cock to Peter King. Fucking? We yeah, showed his cock true. to Peter King. Peter King actually he ate it. Like yeah. Peter King he was took, like, oh, he well, that's a, a cock. I know. He was like, that's a that's a penis. <laughs> Weird. That's penisish. That's uh, a Peter. <laughs> we're gonna get back to Paul Bizonette in a second. Before we do, I want to talk to you guys about our great, great friends over at Bird Dogs. I'm rocking my Bird Dogs right now. Uh, it's summertime. Shorts are back big time. Hank told you that last week. Uh, and when I'm wearing shorts, I'm wearing Bird Dogs every single time. Bird Dogs are the perfect short. If you're out there still wearing random shorts that you pick up here and there that you've pieced together, if your shorts drawer looks like just a complete clusterfuck, you need to get on the Bird Dogs train because they're the only pairs of shorts I own. I think I have maybe 10 or 12 pairs of Bird Dogs. My life has improved tremendously from doing a full switch over to Bird Dogs. They've got a built-in liner, which is like underwear. So if you pack up a pair to take to the gym, it makes things a lot easier. You don't have to worry about changing entire outfit. You just put on a fresh new pair of Bird Dogs, change back to your normal clothes. You're good to go. Bird Dogs are the best shorts I've ever worn. They've got zipper pockets. They've got normal pockets. uh, They've got a drawstring, elastic waistband. Very comfortable. You can wear them to the gym. You can also wear them as a swimsuit. They dry off very, very quickly. We love Bird Dogs. It's warming up. Bird Dogs are back. Big time. They stole Lululemon's designer. They're doing it better than Lululemon. They, They got their leader. They said, I am the captain now. We are the leaders when it comes to casual athletic wear for guys or girls. Bird dogs are the best and most comfortable pair of shorts that have ever, ever existed. If you thought that giving away the rubber clogs was good, listen to this giveaway. Go to birddogs.com, enter promo code TAKE. They will throw in a free bird dogs whistle tip football. Holy shit. You remember those Nerf Vortex Howler footballs that whistle when you throw them? The footballs that you can throw for pretty much a mile that's it bird dogs threw their logo on it genius that is a must i'm putting a pft must have for the bird dogs whistle tip football if you plan on going to a beach this summer you're going to want one of those footballs please bird dogs if you're listening to this I, I beg of you please send me a whistle tip football to huck around at the beach this summer go to birddogs.com promo code take and boom you get a free bird dogs whistle tip football with your pair of bird dogs, you're not going to want to take things off this summer. I promise you that. Now, here's more Paul missing it. Real quick change of conversation. You guys, Why? You guys talk about the, the Vegas flu a lot, and you've documented that it's a very real thing. You just talked about it. Although that might have been you just sliding into the fact that you were injured again when you scored a goal to make us realize how tough you are. But the Vegas flu is real during the regular season. Is it real during the playoffs? Like, are, are teams going out in Vegas no. during playoff series? No, playoff times, you, you guys juice. lock it in. Yeah. yeah, you're an absolute degenerate if you're chasing it in playoffs. Mm-hmm. I think there's enough times during the regular season where you can kind of unload. Although on the flip side of that, the uh, the year St. Louis went to their cup, apparently they were having a blast throughout the entire playoffs, getting lit up. Uh, usually on the road on the in the um, in the hotel they have this like a uh, away suite where you can play all the videos games and stuff. And apparently they were getting buckled big time. In their in their road suites wherever they were, and even when um, even when the L.A. Kings won their cup, every time they won a series, they were I think the eighth seed when they won it their first time. They were going out in Hollywood like three four nights in a row, and they would just rip it up. So, um, the, the, as far as Vegas is concerned, I don't think anybody who's traveling to Vegas right now to win a Stanley Cup is drinking. The game has changed a little bit. Yeah, I just like how you say Vegas. Mm-hmm. Vegas, Vegas organization. Yeah, the Vegas, the Vegas organization is is top class. Jake, what do you think? I think it's Vegas, but I think <laughs> Vegas, <laughs> I think Got Vegas is cool because you put yeah, your little no, Jake just made you, you put you in his back pocket. Right. Uh, speaking of putting back pocket, around. have you recovered from when I sweated you on what was that oh, Wednesday yeah, that was night? Bad. I beat bad the look. fuck out. That of was you. live stream one. Uh, that felt like six months ago. I think that was live stream two. I think that was the actually the night that uh, Big Cat impregnated his wife. Well, that that's was, not, was, how that not how it that's works. That's not how it works. Ten months ago? Was yeah, that ten months ago? How, that was t- 12 hours. That's not how it works. Should we explain the fact that in, uh, girls are not pregnant for nine months? Yeah. Did you I, explain I, this to your followers? It's ten months. Yeah, no. Biz, like, I blew his mind. 
10 months. I had no clue. Because there's, no, there's no month zero. <laughs> yeah. It's 10 months. I'm tired. What else are we going to talk about? Uh, all right. What other big like takeaways do you have from the playoffs? Um, I'm drinking a Coca-Cola right now. Yeah, I'm struggling, guys. As I said, four live streams in a row, a couple <laughs> interviews. Not I'll be just carrying this whole <laughs> sounds like almost like a full on work my week. back. Uh, <laughs> it's like um, it's like listing all the things you did, and it's like that's a work week. <laughs> what's the other? Oh, uh, Edmonton's down 2-0. McDavid has not recorded a point. I don't. That's Ooh, kind of, that's, yeah. that's taking over it, Canadian. Uh, they're no longer, 2-0 in the game they're playing but right it, now. Is he no longer McJesus? You, that, you guys call him that all the time. It's like I would think that a player that had earned that nickname would show up in the playoffs. It's hard because I mean he's he's basically having to live live up to Gretzky, right? And I don't or think, Jesus. Actually, no. Gretzky. Give us give us the player. rankings of young guys. McKinnon. Uh, McKinnon's number Austin two. Austin Matthews. In my opinion. And then you're saying McDavid's number one? Yeah, McDavid's one because of the skill set. I like McKinnon just because he's, he, he's got this like pit bull attitude to where he just, he'll throw hits and he's just, he's like type A, like he just wants to like step on your throat. And I, I embrace that in a, you know, in a competitor and, and a type of guy that I would want on my team as my first line center. Perfect biz jinx. Uh, McDavid has two assists tonight. The Edmonton Oilers are up two. Well, you knew I would have put a gazillion dollars on the fact that he would have put up a point after getting shut out in his two first games at home. Yeah. That was the easiest bet in history. They were wearing, you guys, did you guys bet that? They were wearing the worst. Did you worst, guys bet that? No. They were wearing <laughs> worse sweaters money. on. Money. On uh, how much does that play in when a team comes out in like their worst alternates? Because you, you see the Oilers in Game One, they were wearing the black with like orange Friday outline. Night, yeah, they wore that too. Oh, terrible, yeah. terrible. They yeah. have great fucking jerseys, and then they go with Sometimes that. Sometimes you overthink it, and it God. just it just fucks everything up. It. I mean, you, that that is true though. Like, look good, play good, right? Like when you're wearing good, your feel good, play good all yeah, the time. Yeah. When you're wearing the throwback yotes with the cool fucking the Kachina. Yeah. Is that what his name yes. is? Yes. Okay. Well, they came out with a reverse retro this year, which was one of the jerseys they had early on um, in the organization where it's kind of it like the Kachina head. What organization? Yeah. yeah. I love how you say it. I fucking love how it's you say good. it. Yeah. That's the good stuff. That's why people listen to your podcast. For those little things like that. I fucking love how you say it. That's I'm being genuine right now. And and it has the the purple on it. And I know that's uh, Justin Bieber's favorite color. And a lot of these young kids like the purple royalty and, in the uni in, in the uniforms. Now is that another word you like that I say royalty? Nope. No uniforms. Uniforms. Organizations and uniforms. Uni. uni. And uh, yeah, we came out with a really nice reverse retro. I personally think that the Kachina is one of the nicest jerseys in all of pro pro sports. What about a, a game that was like the uh, the Oilers on Friday night? It was zero zero. Went to overtime. When it's when it's a zero zero game in the playoffs, are both teams just like afraid to make a mistake at that point? After like two periods of scoreless hockey, or it's it felt like everybody was just really really tight. I mean, those are games where I'm like, perfect. I fit right in. Nobody's got a point. I don't got a point. This is great. Everybody's having a great <laughs> time. Other, point, other huh? than maybe the guys who are expected to get points. And at some point, somebody gets a point. Yeah. <laughs> I don't really know how I you want to answer that. Until that point, I love it. you are Until pointless that point, with everyone. everybody is equal on the ice. What's Nobody's the, a minus. Yeah. Maybe if you look at the ice time, there's a difference, but it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. What is the uh, moment... If you can point to it, when uh, overtime hockey becomes drunk hockey, is it the second overtime? Is it the third overtime? Because you know that moment where it just becomes like guys are just falling everywhere, sliding everywhere. It's not like nothing is crisp. Everything is just falling apart, and it's just you're hoping you get a lucky goal. I don't know how uh, – I can't – I don't think I've ever been part of a game that went to like three or four overtimes. At that point, everybody's so tired, especially the guys who actually have to roll out there. So I, I'll, two I'll be, or three. I'll, I'll be quite frank. If a game went into like second or third overtime and I was playing in the NHL, guaranteed I wouldn't have the ice because there was like a slim chance I would hit it in the third period of a regular season game. Um, but yeah, I, I would say at the point of about second overtime, which happened in the Carolina Nashville series yeah. today, where Nashville, who was getting drastically outshot, ended up prevailing. Yes. Where, where like, the team who's working hard and generating all these opportunities and getting stopped, yeah, at a certain point, they're just like, 
Holy fuck! Yeah, there's a, there's a level of fatigue that probably becomes a, a level of drunkenness. Yeah, it's a it's a point of uh, it's like a great equalizer somewhere in that second overtime of playoff hockey where it's like it it has nothing to do with skill anymore. It's just someone's going to get a bounce and that will be the game. That's like a live bet thriller. Right yeah, there. it is, but it's it's so much fun to watch. Like when you're you're like, okay, this game makes no no sense. You're just if you're rooting for a team, you're just praying that you get that bounce. Correct, and the bounce was in the. Nashville game is the fact that uh, busting with the boys. Yep, Taylor Luan. He was there. You knew his name. You didn't need me to. You Taylor me Luan and and he was crushing and beers. Will in the Compton. Front. You didn't he, need his name. Either. I knew Will. Fuck, I talked to Will all the time. Nice. Stop. Stop. But Taylor never. Well, he's just more popular, and I did kind of forget his name there off the hop. I thought it was a, I thought it was like Taewon or something. <laughs> Taewon. Taewon's pretty good. Uh, he's got all the tats good. and stuff. It's hard to figure out. But anyway. Is there he anything would, that like offensive linemen love more than just yugging beers yeah, at no. hockey games? And getting free tickets, sitting shotgun, just probably free beers too. Yeah. They go to hockey games, they become Dana beers. And yeah, it, <laughs> that's true. But anyway, what were you saying about the... the that, no clue. That moment <laughs> no clue. changed... That moment changed the whole game. Yeah. When he got up, it was pure domination by Carolina. He gets up, yugs a beer front row center, and then uh, kisses his wife and uh, the rest is history. Boom. Uh, how much do you miss seeing yourself on TV and having Ryan Whitney be like more like Paul missed the net? Ooh. I don't miss those commercials at all, guys. But you, you wrote that, right? You wrote that line? I, we, we were there, and, and we were struggling to find anything. And, we yeah, we came up with that one, which was sent to me, I think, via – Twitter or something at one point, so I reused it. it oh wow! Yeah, breaking news because Wit said that you wrote that. Well, I I technically did on set. Yeah, okay. you technically wrote it on set. You read it on oh, set. So from all, oh, so all your guys' material you just think up off. Yeah, the, the, never million even percent. never well, you guys for, never recycle fan. Except stuff? for Billy. Billy does that. That's what you're talking about. Where is that guy, Billy? Football. He's on his uh, rum springer. He's taking a break. Somebody said, drunk. oh, somebody tweeted at us fraternity leave for Billy. I thought yes. that was funny, but I'm giving them credit, not saying that I wrote it. You son of a bitch. But you should have kept your mouth shut about that because Wit had us believing that you were like the mastermind behind that whole that whole vodka commercial. I was well, like, damn, I, biz I thought I thought on my feet. Mm hmm. Are you trying to put me down? I don't. Do you no. want to wrestle? No, I, I think yeah. I've already demonstrated. Jake, I want to go two on one. Jake no. and Jake and Jake will fuck you up. He's our pit bull. You were talking about pit you bull. Want one? You want a piece? Rough and rowdy. You want Jake you want to would sell some fuck tickets? you. You want to move some pay per views? We should get back in the booth together. Call we could. Mocky. We could. We could maybe uh, maybe TNT. Maybe they'll be calling for us, Jake. We should yeah. send in that tape. Yeah. Oh, I have it. Yeah. I did have a serious hockey media question for okay. you. Now that ESPN is going to have rights to hockey, they're probably going to talk about it more. It's going to be featured more on the air. I think that they're going to try to hire somebody because what they do at ESPN, they'll be like, we need to get our own version of Ryan Whitney, Paul Bissonette, and R.A., and Mike Grinelli. Shout out to Rolex. Um, who do you think <sighs> they're going to hire? And they'll be like, this is our spitting chicklets. Well, they already have a few people. I think they got uh, Ray Ferraro. Mm -hmm. And they got uh, Boucher, mm -hmm. uh, Leah Hextall they just hired, and, uh, I mean, Gross is there. Plenty of people. So what do you mean? I'm just saying they're, I think they're going to bring in somebody new, somebody, like, younger. You can't, you can't, you can't replicate that magic on Spit and Chicklets. You can't, but they're going to, you know, they're You can't replicate well R.A. and Wit and biz being handled by Grinelli. Yeah, Shout out Grinelli, you, you, by the you, way. You can't smoke Thank weed you. before you go on the broadcast. Grinelli being you, like, You can't hey, do any type of drug or, or drink alcohol uh, before I, they hit the, I, hit the button. I, I, pre I actually genuinely appreciate the job that Mike Grinell does because yeah. uh, I to book you on this, I had to go through a booker. Yeah. Mike Grinell. Yeah, and then uh, <laughs> he was like, "What time do you need?" I was this? trying to avoid it at all costs, considering the the amount of alcohol I've consumed over the last four days. Mm -hmm. But I somehow somehow ended up here. And all right, last I'm, question. I'm, ho I'm holding it together. Last question, because I know you want to you want to take a nap. Give us your Stanley Cup final and champion, the Flyers. We already know that. Yeah, as of right now, you can pick well, anyone. Well, you can well, redo. This is your redo. Your PMT redo. It's hard because they reset after like in standings depends on who makes it right. So right. I would I would uh, at this point we know how playoffs. Work. I would say Colorado. <laughs> shut the fuck up, <laughs> Colorado and uh, you can just say who's gonna win. <laughs> Colorado and Tampa in the finals. There we go. Okay. Wow. So Tampa like, would yeah, be going for back to back. Only if in fact they did win this afternoon, and we still haven't gotten full confirmation. Tampa they did they, they won have. yesterday afternoon, so it's been more than twenty four hours since they went up three one. <laughs> 
So I would say Colorado, Tampa, and that would be good for hockey. Two, two, uh, two southern markets in the United States thriving. Colorado, not deep at south. All no, they're southern. deep south. You don't consider Colorado Southern? <laughs> Colorado is absolutely based part on of the, the south. North. Wait, based wait, on the based what? on the North South, Colorado based South, on the North how, American scale, how would you? Colorado s- is considered Southern. It's no, no. Wait, it's what west. map are you looking it's at? It's not. Uh, it's not North or South. It's West. <laughs> you know what? Fuck it. Colorado's part of the South now. No, Jake. but you wouldn't say North or South for Colorado. You say it's out west. Jake, if I took a map of North America and I said Colorado, I'd consider that more South than most of the markets. Wait, hit, wait, hold on. I think it's right around the middle of North America because it's in the middle of no. The he's saying country. in the middle of, of the country, not no, North, he said America. North America. You're saying North America, so, but that includes all of Mexico, Mexico too. I think that Colorado. Oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah. Fuck Mexico. Mexico's in Actually, North America. Actually, doesn't it go all the way to pa- Mexico's it- in North America? Yeah, yeah. Yes. Okay. Well, then forget what I said. Central America starts Belize. Yeah. So Panama is. No, Panama's Panama Central is, America. Si- Panama's, so Guatemala is Guatemala Central, Central? Also Central America. All right. That's the best thing about these podcasts. I think half of your viewers probably, our listeners probably didn't realize that uh, Mexico was a, a part of North America. They yeah, probably, but in no way would you call Colorado. I guess if you're. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm with Biz now. Like, I think we should start referring. I guess if I you're. I know they, call- do, they are like the, the most uh, skiing destination it, in America, but we're still going to consider them part of the South. Well, and also if you're going to, if you're talking from someone like from. Uh, Calgary, Colorado's as south as it gets. Yep. So there it is. I meant all the teams in play. They're one of the southern teams. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. Sure. That's how my brain. Works. I don't. Sure. I think. Like, just, would, are the are the Coyotes a southern? Yes, hundred percent. But they're a west team. Yeah, they're west south west is the is the west is like L A. That's west. That's west. Yeah. But, but is it southern? Also south. I would consider it a southern team as well. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so what I about? <laughs> San, I, I like how you. I, I like anything, how you interpret the map. Anything south of the Canadian border is, is uh-huh. southern. 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 So Minnesota say, like, is a southern the team. The Patrick Correct. Waugh trade that probably gave you your first real life example as to where Colorado is, and you just knew that your goalie was going to a team that was further south than the Canadiens. Yeah, and you're like, that's the SEC. Oh, I do have one last question. Uh, so you gave us your your final. Are you, would you feel any pride or are you rooting in any way for the Canadian teams because it has been so long? Like, do you, I know you, you're, you know, you're a journalist. You have a podcast that covers the entire league. You also work for an organization, not a big deal. But if like push came to shove, would you prefer a Canadian team as a Canadian to win? Um, I would like to see the Leafs win it, but it's, it would suck this year if they did with, not fans in the building. Yeah. Because right now in Canada, there's currently no fans. Yeah. Which is fucking crazy. Because you got Montreal Montreal Canadiens versus the Toronto Maple Leafs. Not one fan gets to see it in attendance. They said they, there, there was rumor that later in the series that maybe Montreal was going to start having fans. But even if it's like 1,500 people, it still ain't the same. Yeah. So Are they going to keep these divisions? That would be fucking cool. So, so, so what I'm hearing is, is if... Um, Potentially, if Toronto ends up advancing to the conference final, they might use Arizona as like a hub city. So let's just happen. Let's let's say it happens. Colorado, Toronto. Right. Well, Colorado's going to play out of Colorado, but where would Toronto? Because they can't keep going past the border. Mm-hmm. Right. There's like a seven, and unless at that point they allow it, but they would make a, a place like um, a Phoenix their hub city. Well, that would fuck up Colorado because then they would be a northern team. Yeah, and Toronto would be I'd a su- Toronto would be out. a southern com- team. I'm gonna, let's end, I mean, let's you wrap go, this thing up. If you're going to Arizona, you got that just changes uh, the entire dynamic well, I th- of this. I, what, I you're playing a southern team from the north. If you're Colorado, and and Austin Matthews, the connection to there in in, in Scottsdale slash Phoenix would be cool. So oh, you would have yeah. your, what's you, the connection? Well, he was born there. Got oh, it. I was or or was raised say, there anyway. There was another thing that happened there. Oh, stop it. Uh oh! Stop it! I thought that's what you were saying. I, I'm sorry. My last last question: um, <laughs> When are you gonna get your haircut again? I don't know. I actually like it. It distracts from your nose. Is it? Is your lady, Have you completely checked out? Does your well? You've checked out 25 minutes ago. That's does true. your lady like the hair? I think she. Yeah, she likes it. Oh, I might nice. get some cone rows. You look like the dude who showed up at uh, at the start of Old Schools, like a hair for the gangbang. That's that, you. That's at the start of the movie. Have you ever been in a gangbang? <laughs> 
<laughs> I know the answer group to sex. that. All right. <laughs> Have you been involved in group sex, BFD? What, what do you define as group sex? My left hand and my right hand? <laughs> what about you, big cat? No. You and Patrick Sharp? Yeah. <laughs> yes. On the, on the bang bus? Yes, yes. <laughs> We're going to go find the milf hunter. All right, All right. thanks, Biz. That's very insightful. Jake, have you ever been involved in group sex? <laughs> if Biz no. called you up, Jake, though, and was like, hey, Jake, I got some group sex for us. <laughs> Two on one, no back checkers. And we, come, and we, and we come get to, my and we hotel get to room? be the host of an ex- uh, uh, NHL game on, on yeah, NBC. That's yeah. exactly how that he phrases the dynamic. Too. Yeah. Would it's you obvi- sacrifice for the squad? It's an opportunity for more reps sex, to get yeah. better in the booth. So. <laughs> you can't what, make anything less appealing than hey, saying what, group what, sex. What, what, <laughs> hey, what if you knew your performance was going to be played to the masses? What if it had to your go on, on, on the on the pardon my take social accounts? You, your group sex goes to the masses, but you have Al Michaels' career. Ooh. Yeah, I'm basically, actually, no, I should say Marv Albert. You yeah. basically have Marv oh, Albert's no, no, career no, no, no. because of Marv you Albert. You wouldn't do that? Al Michaels' career is very appealing. Yeah. What if you had a French dip Lisa Ann to get <laughs> Al Michaels' career? Would you do it? I don't know. Also, it's tough. It's tough. Yeah, it is. He's, tough. Tough. He's right. It would it would like gel you guys as like broadcast partners forever. You can't get closer with a guy than doing that. Yeah, it's true. That would be yeah, that would actually DP. be great. A little, a little group sex. Yeah, a little one group sex. Hoop, one with the edge. I can just uh-huh. say, hold on. Hey. Who's got which the guy, hey, which one? Which which? <laughs> it's a multiple partners. Which, uh, which tunnel would you take, Jake? <laughs> I'll let you pick. <laughs> it's a lady's choice. It's a lady's choice. Yeah. What a gentleman! Yeah. What yeah. a gentleman! All right, Biz. Good talk. Thank Guys, you. Guys, yeah. I'm sorry I didn't re- have much hockey. No, insight. you fucking crushed it. Yeah, Four it live great. streams. Yeah. Your brain's Four live be streams, two interviews, a lot of right group sex. Now. Some may say the guy worked this week. <laughs> Wait, four live streams in how many days? Five days. Four. Five days and Jesus. two interviews. Four. Two interviews. Wow. Cal Ripken Jr. <laughs> it's a job. Paul Pissonette was brought to you by our friends over at Free Fly. Brands send us clothing all the time. There aren't too many that I can actually say that I love enough to wear on a consistent basis, but there is one brand that's so comfortable, it's become one of my go-tos for the last couple years. They make performance clothing using buttery soft bamboo, and it feels like clouds. It is the perfect fabric to make clothes out of. I don't know why no other company makes their fabrics out of bamboo, but for some reason, bamboo is the softest thing that I've ever put on. Mm -hmm. Uh, I tried one of their sweatshirts the other day, Incredible. I, my body just melted into it. It's amazing. Whether you're outside, if you're hitting the gym, if you're lounging around the hu- uh, around the house, this stuff is, it feels like you're wearing a pillow all over your body. It feels like you're in bed sheets, just walking around. It's super, super comfortable. And it's got UPF sun protection built into it since it's bamboo clothing. It wicks away moisture. It won't hold odor. And it's super comfortable. And you can get 20% off when you visit freeflyapparel.com slash take. Again, that's free, freeflyapparel.com slash take. All right. Let's wrap up. By the way, this clip is so fucking sick of uh, Phil teeing off the 18th. This is, this is what we missed. And this dude's just going nuts. And everyone following him. 16 um, years since the last time he won a, uh, a major. I'm going insane. to go hold this sausage pizza underneath Paul's nose. Wait, wait. Before you do that, let's do the let's do the Monday reading real quick. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, it's titled Sportsmanship, Not Disrespect. The real story of what happened after playing table tennis with Hank. Okay. Who's it written by? Uh, uh, anonymous. Unnamed. unnamed. You've all seen the clip by now. So I'm not sure how much of a backstory is needed. Oh, I think we need a backstory. It was another thrilling three-set match against Hank inside Stream Stadium. He was on the winning end of a marathon's first set, taking it 25-23. I settled in as the match went on, evening the series after a 21-9 second set victory. And then came the third set, <laughs> when I was fortunate enough to take that one in the series after a 21-14 win. But everyone is talking about her post-game handshake. When I went up to Hank and shook his hand after the final point, I walked away after, turned around, and saw that Hank was still down on the ground. So, I decided to go back and attempt to help him up. I got in the position to do that. (laughs) Hank just shook his head in disgust. Excuse me? (laughs) Hank, can I finish? I got in the position to do that. He rejected my offer, and when I walked away, 
with the position I put myself in, it did look identical to the Allen Iverson. Moment. <laughs> nice, nice pointing it out. <laughs> nice pointing it out there, Jake. I'm here to tell you that this was absolutely not the intention here. Could I have stayed to the side and offered my arm out? Sure. But that's not what happened. And I get the hoopla over the position. I pride myself on being a positive person and having sportsmanship every time I compete. And that is what I was trying to do here. I'm sorry that Hank has to be on the other side of this as well. Because as I mentioned before, that was not what I was going for. I was genuinely trying to help him up. That's it. More importantly, for the second consecutive week, we had a $500 progressive <laughs> jackpot winner. Congratulations to Steve Kolb for cashing in and going perfect on his picks. And that that's a two that's a deep drive to left field, make it a two nothing ball. That's the important part of this. Uh-huh. I like how you brought up the Allen Iverson thing. I love that. Uh-huh. Well, I'm not going to beat around the bush. It did look like it. Yeah. Jake, that's I, what happened. I, I think you should also just remind people that you were merely positioning your hips in the most powerful stance possible mm-hmm. so you could lift them up off the ground. Mm-hmm. Right. I was trying to help him up. You, you had squared your hips to Henry? his chin. I have no problem with anything, Jake. Well, no, I do have some problem. What do you, but like, I, <laughs> my issue is entirely with like babyface Jake pretending like it was sportsmanship and he was trying it was. to be nice. It was. No, 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 no Practicing, no one on the other side. Yeah, he because you didn't schedule me no a match to play before. So him. he was—he's just—you're a psychopath, Jake. You okay. did what you did on purpose. Nope. You're—you're. You're, it's all right. It's, I had no problem with that as a competitor myself. I know that's how it is, but I don't pretend to I'm be not you know, Mr. Man in the arena, nerdy Jake Marsh. When in reality, I'm a psychopath. <laughs> I am that's not all right. pretending. I'm not pretending. Fucking love it, Jake. You can take my word. Um, all right, before we. Uh, Wake up Biz to end the show for his number. I had another kid. Congrats on the sex. Thank you. It was awesome. Much recommended. If you ever have a chance to have a child or two. Get a how, how, can, how do you do that? We yeah, already we, covered, we, we that. covered that. Yeah. We covered that. No, but it was, I, the only thing that sucks, and I was talking to Hank about this when I got in the office today, is that I, it's also my who's back of the week should have been people gatekeeping my life, being like, there's nothing worse than I'll tweet about a Cubs game, and they'll be like, Bro, spend time with your family. It's mm-hmm. like, listen, guys, I got it set up. Uh, I spend a lot of time with my family. Multiple I love, screens, by the way. I love being a dad. It truly is better than anything else. It's fucking awesome. It was the coolest thing ever, having my son meet my daughter. He did, like, two minutes after he met her, uh, go and get her a dog toy, being like, here, this is this is it. So I think he just thought, like, he was going to have another Stella. That's uh, honestly with. that's honestly like the nicest thing ever though because in his brain he thinks that the coolest thing that you can do for a friend his best friend is probably Stella or yeah. one of them yep. is to get one of their favorite toys. Yes. Like, in his brain he was actually like this is good. putting a crown on her head. And he was very sweet and he was happy and then uh like 5 minutes later he tried to poke her in the eye and told her he couldn't do that and then he was like really mad at me. But uh yeah, it was cool. Uh, everyone's healthy. Mom and baby girl are healthy. How Thank are you? I'm I'm great. Very little sleep, but I'm great. Uh, I appreciate though everyone's uh, congrats and it was trending on Friday. It really does mean a lot. I know I I don't talk a lot about my private life, but uh, when I do open it up, it's always nice that people are nice. So I really do appreciate that. And also shout out the one. Uh, Stooley who stopped me on the street on Saturday. I was with my son and he asked for a picture. He looked like a better, taller, better looking, taller version of Billy Football. He asked me for a picture. So I was like, yeah, sure. And he went to grab his phone and he pulled out his phone and uh, out popped a Magnum condom. So I was like, well, that's cool, dude. That's sick. And I was like, yeah, your life is that way different than mine. That guy's the best. Yeah, he's like, oh, I didn't mean to do that. Also, I thought it was very... I want to hire you, dude. It was very um, <laughs> selfless timing on your part. Yes. Because Hank was trending on Twitter. Yes. People t- discussing the uh, the step over heard around the world. And you immediately yes. took that out of the equation. Yes. Like, that's that's teamwork as a yes. podcast goes. So, in the, I know some people were asking, like, will there be a life part two with Priscilla and Titus? Funny enough, we actually had it planned to tape on Friday at 1 o'clock. Uh, my my, my uh, daughter decided to show up on Friday morning. So we're going to wait. We're going to hold off till we're all together possibly later this summer because it will be better together. We're going to do it over Zoom, which would have sucked. 
Um, so we'll do that, guaranteed. Whether it comes a year from now, six months, two months, we will do that podcast. But uh, seriously, it was an awesome weekend for my family, and I appreciate everyone's kind words. And, uh, yeah, being a dad is the best. And uh, my son also just broke the uh, – picking up the rocks and handing them to me like they're – pieces of gold record on sunday morning at the park so Hell yeah no big deal i i basically he's gonna be an archaeologist um uh yeah okay archae- that's fossils yeah what's rocks the- geologist geologist. geologist i had a professor in college who taught geology and his name was rocky yeah i thought that was kind of cool they call it rocks perfect. for jocks rocks for jocks yeah. yeah oh the science class do you think do you think mellow Oh, what if we took the same class? Think I think it was G O one hundred three or one ten. I thought that would be wild year. if he took it. Yeah, oh, I thought you were talking about crack. <sighs> no, Lamar Odom no. took that one. No, no. Uh, all right, let's see if we can wake him up. So forty eight PFT. If you're watching on YouTube, please subscribe on the YouTube. PFT is putting a piece of pizza in his nose. Oh, oh, he's sniffing. He's humming. He's humming. He's moving. Biz. No, thank you. <laughs> what do you say? Pizza. Pick a number between one and a hundred. Biz, pick, pick a pick number. number. Pick a number. Uh, twelve. 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 Hey, Biz, okay. did you hear what happened with Connor McDavid? No. They lost. Tell him. They, they lost. They were up four one. They blew four one lead. No, they didn't. Yes, yeah, they, they did. did. And then he like destroyed a water bottle after the game. People are Mike Trout is trending on Twitter right now because McDavid lost. Yep. Biz, any words? Did you listen to the show, Biz? They lost. All right, give me uh, 18. Eight. 46 eight not eligible for those picking up. Uh, 99. Name said 86. Oh, he said it was 12! Fuck. 19. 19. 19. One away. I wish we had gotten him. I saw 12 dancing around up there. I did too. It was Biz. close. You should probably go home. Jake, do you have a... Uh, I'll also be here for yeah. a few Let's hours. Let's go journalism fact. Journalism fla- fact? Yeah. Dick Clark was a huge fan of the Flintstones, and he once purchased a $3.5 million estate in Malibu, California that was bedrocked and bedrock inspired. That's Ooh, nice. There's nothing that worse than... a pussy palace. ...having someone doing a full podcast that you thought was a banger and having someone sleep through the entire thing. <laughs> like, that's such an ego check on us. Mm-hmm. Love you guys. <laughs> He didn't wake up for pizza either.